Good morning and welcome to day five of the European Championships here in Munich. We've had so many sunny days and around about 4 p.m. yesterday local time, the heavens opened. We had to delay the start to the evening session with some really heavy rain and lightning. The organizers quite rightly just delaying things by around about half an hour to give all of our athletes the best chance of performance, particularly with the elements like the men's hammer throw, women's long jump over there on the right-hand side of the screen. They were pretty exposed. But in the end, we had another brilliant night of athletics. Everyone was looking to Malika Mahambo of Germany to take the long jump title. That was the big story everyone was waiting to write. But instead, it was Constanze Klosterhalfen who powered through and took a gold in the 5K. Mahambo having to give way to Ivana Buleta of Serbia in the women's long jump. But it's a bit cooler this morning. There is some drizzle. And I don't think that's very good baton exchanging conditions. We were discussing that on our walk in. It's a bit wet, it's a bit cold. That could cause some issues for our relay heats we've got going on this morning. But it doesn't seem to have dampened the spirits of the locals. It's uh, some patriotic clothing going on there. Pretty sure they're supporting Germany. That guy's here for some Italian superstars. That men's four by 100 are the Olympic champions. Can they navigate the heats today? So myself, Hannah England, Phil Minchel and Alex Seftel will be bringing you all the action this morning. Phil and Alex, anything particularly you're looking forward to in this morning's session? Well, in this morning's session, we've obviously got the women's high jump and we've got the three Ukrainian athletes in contention. We've got the world indoor champion Yaroslava Maucic and of course she's a two-time world championship silver medalist and we all know the situation in Ukraine and they've been scattered across Europe trying to hold their lives together worried about their families back home and at the same time trying to continue their careers as professional athletes in that women's qualifying as well her compatriots Irina Hedashenko and Yulia Levchenko so we're going to really be empathizing with them and I think uh, any neutrals, of course, uh, wonderfully educated group of fans here in this Olympic Stadium, but we can certainly empathize with their situation and I think all the neutrals will be wishing them the best. Yeah, and uh, I'm looking forward to, first of all, this morning with the men's javelin. You've got another home favorite with uh, Thomas Rohler, the uh, Olympic and European champion, but he'll face some good battles with the likes of the Czechs who did really well at a tricky Olympic Games with tough conditions where many of the throats found it difficult. Vitislav Veseli and uh, Jakub Vadlec. So we see some athletes arriving this morning, some with their javelins, some without. And yes, to be honest, damp conditions last night that didn't seem to dampen the atmosphere. It's good to see the Italian team having a warm-up they are the olympic champions they didn't manage to retain that title at the world champs and we did hear a rumor that we thought Le Mans marcel jacobs might be struggling this morning looks all right with that walkthrough drill there here's some of the french team doing it on a run as well this is for the, they can get used to each other's voices they're practicing that hand position exactly what their preference will be when they come it into the race and they've got the reserves in there as well, just in case there's a late change needed. So you can see all six men in the Dutch team, and you saw, I think it was eight women in the French squad there. <laughs> that's, that's a bit of a sloppy handover, isn't it? I don't... <laughs> you can see, uh, they're just, there we go. A little bit faster from the Spanish team. That's, they'll start slow like that in a walking drill, and then they'll build it up to a bit of a run. A 4x100 is so technical, as is the high jump, of course. We saw pretty wet conditions in the men's high jump yesterday. Gianmarco Tamburi managing to come out on top despite the tricky conditions. Yaroslav Mahucic will be doing her very best to do the same. Villa Tadgari of Italy might hope to make it a double gold for, it, for her nation. She's having a great season. Yes, Valatagana is coming back after a couple of years of injury and other problems. I mean, she cleared, she really broke onto the stage a few years ago when she cleared 201 at the London Diamond League meeting. Seemed to disappear off the radar for a long time and has now come back and is really jumping well. As you can also see, two women I mentioned a little bit earlier, Hedashenko and this is Levchenko, just going through some drills undercover nearby, just staying warm. Keely Hodgkinson and our coach Trevor Painter making their way down to the track. Keely looked pretty comfortable in qualification yesterday, as did Ronel Lamotte 
It's interesting to see that indoor warm-up area, some of the athletes choosing to use that. It's not cold here in Munich, but it is wet. So the athletes just using their preference, whether they'd rather be indoors and outdoors, pretty really stuffy indoors. Gemma Riki looked great in qualification yesterday as well. She's just building back from a bout of glandular fever earlier this year. Does look better with every week that goes past. So to have the second and fourth places from last year's Olympics competing in these women's semi-finals could be nail-biting. So the first event to get underway will be men's javelin throw qualification. And also slightly conditions, slightly slippy conditions on that runway potentially. We will have uh, two groups with the first. They expect to start in around four minutes time. The automatic qualification distance that will get you through to that final will be 83 meters and 50. 14 men are over that in Europe this year. 13 are eligible for the competition. And then on the track, we have the heats of the men's four by 100 meter relay. That's uh, Jeremiah Azu. We've got an individual medal, of course, in the 100 metres. Interesting to see how many athletes return, just how many changes there'll be, with maybe some substitutions coming in place for that final. Incidentally, I had a look at the women's 4x1 and saw that Gina Lukenkemper isn't there. Just wonder whether she'll be uh, fit to return for the final. I feel like she won't. But Paul Hessian was 10.18. Olatunde, he ran uh, 10.19, then 10.12. He was just skirting around it, but in doing so, built up so much excitement to when he finally did it in the final, just outside the medals, but huge achievement for the young man. And then uh, Rashida Adelaki then, of course, ran a 400-meter national record, a 50.5 in her final. So... It's been a good championship so far for the Irish sprinters. And just having a look at who else is in this. Netherlands, Tamir Burnett looked impressive in qualification for the 200 metres. Jeremiah Azu, someone who is only 21 years old, he uh, was asked to choose between football and athletics by his coach, Helen James. Seems to have done well with uh, sticking with athletics, winning the British title. Not selected for the World Championships, though. However, getting the opportunity to shine here. The Ukrainians, well, we just touched on the tough nature of trying to find a base for them and the difficulty of the war that's ongoing and trying to find peace of mind and maybe some of the athletes focusing on Athletics, one way to just take their mind of the awful situation that's going on. The Ukrainian 4x1 team have been training at Cardiff in uh, the UK. They have, as you can see there, Smelik, Kovalenko, Dikotko and Vasiliev. Over to the Swiss team, William Race. We saw him yesterday in the 200 metres, led off though by Pascal Mancini, the 33-year-old who has a new 100 lifetime best this year. And then uh, Svensson, the former Swedish champion who's uh, just gained his el eligibility to switch over to Swiss colors. Here is the Spanish quartet with Calero, Montalvo, Gomez and Lopez. Again with a couple of names that they might choose to bring in, like Paul Retamal, who was in the 200. Great Britain and Northern Ireland go from lane five with Azu leading them off. The very experienced Harry Akins Ariti, Jonah Epoloku, who's come into the team this year mainly as the, the leadoff runner. So suddenly, over a few months, he's gained quite a bit more experience. Tommy Randan on the last leg. The Greek team with Zikos, Brontinos, Chivisas, and Nifantopoulos. So they'll go from lane four. The Czech Republic, they have at Stromsic, Polak, Jirka and Kolat. And we'll go from lane three. 
Interestingly that Ireland had chosen to put their fastest runner Israel Olatunde on the first leg to try and build a bit of an advantage. No Marcus Lawler who was in the 200 heats yesterday. They've got uh, Ojibwumi, Doyle and Smith. And then uh, Afrifa, Burnett, Van Gool and Raphael Buju, the former European under-18 champion for the Netherlands then. Right on the inside in lane one. So just the two heats and it'll be the first three in each and then two time qualifiers advancing to the final. Pretty simple maths there, three plus three plus another two equals eight. Those are the lanes on the track. From the inside, Netherlands, Ireland, Czech Republic, Greece, Great Britain and Northern Ireland, Spain, Switzerland and Ukraine. So, reasonably early start for these relay runners. They've been through their paces, done their drills. Can they get the baton round safely? Safe. Oh, today goes off nicely for Ireland. They'll be hoping for him to really make a mark on this opening leg. So we have a look at the first set of changeovers. Reasonably clean. Netherlands also going well on the inside. Harry Aikens Ariti. Someone, as I say, with a lot of experience in winning major international medals. Trusted again here. So, Great Britain and Switzerland. With the Brits, a bit of a sluggish change over there. Let's have a look down this home straight, though. Great Britain, Northern Ireland, from Buju of the Netherlands and Switzerland. Those are the three who make it through to that final. And reasonably clear picture there as they came through. Well, in fact, often in a relay, you say first, second and third across the line. And then we wait to see the official results. 38.41, the time for Great Britain. So, uh, round a second of their fastest time for the year, but not the strongest quartet. There's a number of athletes that could come in, including the likes of uh, Zarnell Hughes, the 2018 100 champion. Nathaniel Mitchell Blake as well competing here. And he also has individual focus as well. We can see there Netherlands and Switzerland with the capital Qs, Greece and Spain. So they'll have to wait to see if their times will be good enough. Yes, for Great Britain and Northern Ireland, it was just a case of getting qualification through to the final, as you were saying, Alex. A uh, number of good runners to come in, number of runners who have probably got over the years good good credentials, European and World Championship medals to their name. The changeovers by Britain and Northern Ireland, I'm sure we'll see on the replay, not super sharp, but solid, and it got the baton round because over the years, the calamities that have befallen British teams in the 4x100 metres, well, it's a very long list. Yes, over the years, there's been some fantastic triumphs as well. Everybody remembers the 2004 Olympic games for by 100 meters it was just a basically good outing from britain it was a solid day at the office the difference being is if you look at switzerland on the inside no stars at all on their team but incredibly well drilled that shows the benefit of actually just getting out there day after day and getting used to your teammates in the case of the British, it's really much a makeshift squad because there's going to be other people coming in. But in the case of the Swiss, it's going to be the same formation, I would imagine, for the final. And they know each other very, very well. And of course, the Dutch, well, always a strong contender at the relays. They have good strength in depth. And it was those three teams that go through. Perhaps a little bit disappointing from the Spanish. I think the Spanish were hoping to get probably a bit closer to 39 seconds in the qualifying places. But they've still got an opportunity of getting through the back door as a non-automatic qualifier. Yeah, so of course we've got two of the medalists from Berlin, Great Britain, who won gold, and the Netherlands, who won bronze. But uh, yeah, a few changes in those quartets, including Brunette, though he was part of the uh, team who set a national record for the Dutch in coming home bronze. Who was between them in silver? Well, that was uh, the Turks. You can see just passing through there. And they have a decent team, the likes of uh, Ramil Pouliev, 2018 200 champion. 
Let's cross though to the javelin, Ton Nikusala of Finland. 84 meter throw this year, but as ever, only the third best in Finland. Such is their strength in depth. Wearing the lumbar support there, Kusala in this opening round. As I say, that yellow mark you can see there is 83.50. Kusala looking a little bit disappointed. So, so tough to get finished selection for major championships. He did that at the Olympic Games. Of course, uh, it is quite an explosive event on the body, particularly on the shoulder area. You can see the uh, tape he's got over there. Oliver Halander has been there. Someone who's threatened to be a real contender at major championships, but has struggled with injury. And we've had the retirement of Tero Pikamak in Antti Ruskinen, who prior to Wilma Murty winning the pole vault, was Finland's last gold medalist at these championships in Zurich in 2014. So they are really trying to find someone who can be the top contender. Did win the European eight, under 18 gold in the men's and women's event. So we'll keep our eyes peeled on how the javelin qualification develops. Now, though, to the second heat of the men's four by 100 meter relay. Well, it's interesting, Hannah. Obviously, we saw some changes to some of the quartets there. There is a bit of a balance between allowing fresh legs to come in, but also if the same athletes get two runs, they might actually develop as a team. Absolutely. We saw with the Swiss team, you know, Phil saying if you haven't necessarily got the superstars individually, then they can be very well drilled, they can be very familiar with each other. Some other nations, if they've got some big hitters like Great Britain and even France, great to see Jimmy Vico down there in this heat. They have to be a bit more versatile um, and they have to be able to kind of roll with the punches because people might get injuries and this, that and the other as they pursue their individual goals. Um, so I think it's ultimately you see some of the more accomplished nations like France and Italy and maybe Great Britain um, be more flexible and maybe playing it safe on their changeovers as well. Now, you, when you've got an unfamiliar squad together in a heat, very much saw that with Great Britain, just set off you know, a little bit slower, a little bit later. Uh, you, you do lose time doing that, but you give yourself a larger chance of getting the baton round and then bring in your big hitters that are more familiar with their, their changeovers into the final. So Denmark will go on the outside here. You'll see the Greek team among those waiting. They finish fourth in the opening heat. So Clausen, Schu Nielsen, Larsen, and Kamanga Durbach. The developing team who set a national record last year. Then the Germans with uh, Kevin Kranz, Hartmann, Anser and Anser Petra, the last two no relation, but uh, Anser Petra, another who looked impressive in the 100, even if it was a, a stacked lineup for that final. And alongside them will be the French. Got uh, the two ZZ brothers, Neva Mikael and Ryan. Matteo and then Vico to bring them home. Just like old times. 10.1 this year, his fastest time, the former European record holder. Robin van der Femden. Well, he's been part of 4x4 relays on many occasions, but competing individually over the 200 here. Merckx, Van Heistraten and Vlemix. And then Kopec, Slovikowski, Vikrota and uh, Suda for Poland. And then this Turkish team with Emre Zafir Barnes, Jack Ali Harvey, Kaihan Urza, and Emre Erzkan. So Barnes and Harvey, both part of that silver medal winning quartet from four years ago. The Finns, well, they set a national record in Berlin four years ago, and uh, Sam Muli Samuelson has done that individually, breaking a 21 year old mark. Samuel Purula, also one of who's uh, risen through the junior ranks, winning medals along the way. And then the Olympic champions, Italy, with Lorenzo Pata. So he's the only one from that quartet who ran in Tokyo. Belanco Rijo, Meluzzo and uh, Chisuru Ali, who we've seen compete individually as well. So they can bring in uh, Filippo Tortu. As Hannah mentioned, we did hear that there may have been an issue in the warm-up for 
Lamont Marcel Jacobs, individual 100 winner. But that may not affect their ability to qualify while we wait for more of an update on that. The Italians will go in lane one, 38-74 this year. Turkish can match that. French and uh, the German quartet have beaten that this year. And Finland, Turkey, Poland, Belgium, France, Germany and Denmark on the outside. So big roar, particularly to get those Germans underway. Kevin Kranz has started nicely and gets ready to hand that bat on over. Very clean changeover, but look at the acceleration from the French with that Matteo. With Poland also going nicely from lane four. So top three making it through automatically to that final. And look at the Germans, one changeover to go then. And looking nicely. Hansa just points his finger and urges his teammate to go. And he does just that. It's Germany from France and Poland. Once again, pretty clear to identify. 37.97 there. So faster than the British quartet by best part of half a second. As we have a look to confirm who will qualify. Italians a little way down on where they'd hoped to be, certainly. It's come up as a national record for the Germans. So terrific stuff here at home in the Olympiastadion in Munich. It's only taken two hundreds off their best ever time of 37.99. France 38.17, two tenths behind. So they are also quicker than the Brits. And then we can see there Belgium have qualified along with Italy. Just a tenth ahead of the Greeks from that first heat. So the Italians maybe with a bit to work on. Be keen to look closely at them when we see the replay. That's what you were on an instant analysis. I hope that's not these two men, Ali and his teammate, thinking they perhaps didn't have a smooth change. Often when you see an instant kind of analysis like that, I wonder if they're wondering if they managed to stay within the changeover zone. Good discipline from the the Flemish team to make the final in Italy. Let's hope they can get Mon Marcel Jacobs back if they do have indeed managed to qualify for this final. Nevertheless, at the sharp end of this race, it's some excellent changeovers from the Germans. The Germans really looking very, very slick indeed. And even if Britain do bring in the likes of Zarnell Hughes, the Germans are really going to be challenging, I think, subject to and being able to repeat such nice changeovers in the final. But any time you run under 38 seconds in the heat, you've got to be a serious contender for a gold at this level. The French changeovers a little bit more ragged from just looking at what was going on out there, especially helped by the replay. Nevertheless, the French certainly have a little bit of room to spare as well. Yeah, so the Germans breaking the national record, actually only recently set in Regensburg in June 37.99. So could be pretty close come that final. Turkey were 100 faster than that in Berlin in 2018. That's where they set their national record. Samuel Polora of Finland here. Still wearing that lucky charm cap, Finland sixth in heat number two Denmark and Ireland both failing to finish we'll keep an eye in case that result changes but at the moment looking like we have our qualifiers through for the men's four by 100 meter final of course we have all sets of relay heats as part of this morning's session and just looking back, it's been 19 since 1962. That was the last time a German quartet won a European 4x100 metres title. Men's, I should say. And there are the teams that will make up that final, as you can see. Showing there that uh, 
Greece have uh, squeezed in. And well, that's the full results. As you can see, there are two teams failing to finish Denmark and Ireland. Right, okay, back to the javelin. This is qualification group A. I love Ramos of Portugal. Sometimes, sometimes we get a cartwheel at the end of this throw. There we go. Thank you very much, Mr. Ramos. Love watching him throw. He's a very good thrower as well. He's not just a, you know, he's not <laughs> just notable for his exploits at the end of the runway. Yes, so just 21 years of age, European under 23 silver medalist and the Euro American champion. You can see there just short of 70 meters. So no throws over 80 just at this point. It is only qualification. Just looking back, 79-74 was needed to make the final four years ago. So things just starting to warm up in this javelin qualification. 69-39 there for Ramos. Strobinders just falls below the line there. But that is a better effort. Very close between the three Latvians over the last few years. Patrick uh, Galems and Roland Strobend is in this, and then uh, Gatis Katz will go in the second group, which, by the way, is going to get going in an hour's time. Jakub Bavlec will also be in that group. Strobend is just waiting for this measurement to come up. 77.33. Let's have a look here. So Denmark and France, that's where the Danish dropped the baton. So unfortunate for them. Would have been a tall order for them to qualify anyway, but still not the way you want to finish your heat. Patrick Scalums, so he's made the best part of two metres improvement this year. 83.65, that new lifetime best for the Latvian. Not that much speed on the runway, but then throws nicely. So that number two mark, 79.26. Really pushes all the way through that point. After converting that energy built up down the runway. So Galem's in this opening round let's have a look 77 55 so only kusala has bettered that so far this is tough for the javelin throwers qualifying at this time of the morning obviously it's cool conditions out there cooler than it's been at any day this week so far and it's an early start as well thomas roller 2016 Olympic champion, 2018 European champion. And in that same year, he was part of the first ever competition where three men were over 90 metres, along with his teammates uh, Johannes Vetter and Andreas Hoffmann. The world standard has ultimately dwindled a little since then, but such is the high bar they set. It was always going to be hard to match that. So here comes uh, Thomas Wola. Let's see what he can do with his opening throw in qualification. So that is over 70 metres, goes off to the left a little. Did appear to be a bit tentative on the runway there. Well, uh, he's also a very good meeting organiser as well in his home country in Germany. Here, yeah, and that was very close to the line, wasn't it? And just wonder whether that will be a valid attempt. No, didn't think so. But just over the line there. You can see the Finns wanting to get a good position by the javelin, but uh, what about this uh, excellent Czech tradition? Always seem to find a way to get on the podium. Vitislav Vesely, now 39 years of age, the Olympic world and European medalist. Won this title in Helsinki in 2012 to upset the uh, home faithful. 
Vasily just looks down, manages to block and come to a dead stop before that line. So Vasily, this could be the best throw that we've seen so far. Nice to get the slow-mo. Javelin finds its spot in the field. 79-27, so leads qualification so far. This is his teammate, Jakob Badlech. Oh no, it's uh, Konecki. Apologies, so Martin Konechny. Bit of space there left to attack. But another decent throw over 75 metres. So becoming a little bit congested on the results table. It's another valid attempt. We've got uh, Vesely over 79 metres and then seven men over 76. I'll tell you what, I'm genuinely surprised that nobody, even though we're at the relatively early stages of this qualifying competition, has thrown over 80 metres yet. I think that's possibly indication of the fact that this is uh, going to be quite a tough qualifying competition and an evenly matched one because it is, as I was saying just a moment ago, quite chilly now. Even over the course of the last half an hour, I've been putting my sweater on and it's uh, starting to get rather cool. Haven't checked yet what the temperature is. Tony Kusala, second round. Looking disappointed, so it's uh, 18 degrees at the moment. Still high in terms of uh, humidity and 20% chance of rain. I often think around 20% chance of rain usually means there will be some rain, but uh, a low amount. Whereas anything around 10% means it's uh, very unlikely. I mean, a wet ground when you're hurling yourself at that takeoff line. Well, not takeoff line. They do sometimes take off, but you're trying to slam the brakes on before the line is just tricky enough anyway but if it's slipping slightly, the men, they will have more spikes on the bottom of their shoes than the runners will do. Those spikes the whole way through, helping them stop, but still having the confidence in the ground when it's a little bit slippy, it's gonna be hard for those men. Well, we've had two rounds of the men's four by 100 meters qualifiers, and now it's the turn of the women. Same as before, first three to go through as of right, two fastest non-automatic qualifiers. There's the Swedish quartet of Henriksson, Busk, Schweinart and I think there's been a bit of a change in the in the draws. So there's the Belgians and Poine, Pakut and Laos, Great Britain, Northern Ireland, Shafilip in there. And the good Spanish team of Molina Prados, Bestui, Sevilla, and Maria Perez, the Spanish record holder at 100 meters. And they're inside Valhuba, Wally, who we've seen in the 100 and 200 meters. Linda and Presler. Italians, Dosso, Hooper, Bongiorni and Pavese. We've seen stronger Italian quartets in their time. Just wondering whether they've got the capacity to go through. And the Greeks, Michelidou, Pesaridou, Anastio and Spanudaki Chatsarigi. So Great Britain, Northern Ireland, the defending champions from Berlin. Asha Philip, the lead-off runner, and she hands over to Imani Lanzaco. Bianca Williams with team captain Asha, Ashley Nielsen on the anchor leg. Great Britain, Northern Ireland, very much the favourites for this race, but it could be a real battle for the other two automatic qualifying spots. And Asher and Philip away very, very quickly. She's already managing to take it, the stagger against the Belgian. 
Now it's Imani Lansico running the long back leg. And it's a good clean changeover as well between the two Britons. And the Britons have quite a significant lead now. Showing well on their outside, Belgium and Sweden. All Britain need now is a safe changeover and they've got it. So Ashley Nilsson bringing Britain home. Coming up quickly on their inside, Denmark with Glenna Franstead. And it's Great Britain not really needing to get out of second gear. The Danes running well and also Spain on the inside. Maria Perez making up for a slightly disappointing 100 metres. Great Britain, Northern Ireland, 42-83, solid performance rather than spectacular for Britain, but they got the job done and got through to tomorrow's final. Spain also qualified as a right, Italy. Spanish team carrying on where they left off at the World Championships, they were great there. You talk about a you know, team being better than their separate parts. Spain is certainly one of those. Season's best for Belgium as well. To sit and wait to see whether themselves and Sweden with those times be fast enough for non-automatic qualifying. Great to see Asha Phillip, Great Britain, on that lead leg. She had to skip the individual event. She contracted COVID and I wasn't sure whether she was even going to be here. We've stayed in Munich or whether that was the end of her championships and her season. But good to see Asha Phillip back here as part of the relay squad. Like with the men's team for Great Britain and Northern Ireland, fairly safe handovers. The Spanish team are very well drilled. We talked about these teams that can have a consistent lineup and they can practice those handovers again and again. And a great final leg from Spain. Ultimately, Ashley Nielsen holding on for the win, but Italy looking really technically good as well. See the discipline there from Ashley Nielsen. This is the name of the game. You've got to put your hand out and trust that your teammate is going to give the baton to you. You don't want to be looking around and slowing down. Good performance all round, and then really impressed you know, given the early morning, the cold weather conditions, just that one drop baton so far from Denmark in the heat two of the men's race. And we haven't seen any disqualifications yet. The judges will go back and look at everything with a fine tooth comb to ensure that the baton was handed over within the changeover zone. Raises the question as to whether Britain should even risk bringing in Dina Asher Smith. Of course, she's got the 200 meter final to come, but given the fact that she's had some injury and cramp problems, I'm wondering whether they're also going to bring in Daryl Nita. I would imagine that they will. Yeah, it's always, like we said, it's, it's that toss up between people that are very used to doing handovers and can read each other's speed. You need to look back at the athlete and go, are they on their top form? Do I take off exactly on my mark? We usually do unless something's gone drastically wrong. There's lots of minor calculations that are a lot easier if you're very familiar with that hand handoff um, pairing. So, Marie Laurence young Fleisch, the bronze medalist four years ago in Berlin, looking to try and get on the podium once again. A good German, seems to have been around for ages. Nicely done at 183. A lot of the women coming in at 178, much lower than they would normally do at a one-day meeting like the Diamond League. I think some of them are just using these lower heights as a warm-up in effect, and that certainly was the impression that Mary Lawrence Youngfleisch gave with that effort. She's the first woman over in this group at 1m33. This is Daniela Stancio. Not the quickest on the run-up, just rather hesitant taking off, but gets over. I also wonder, Phil, with these early entrances at the lower heights than what we'd expect from their season's bests, could be to do with sitting around all week as well. They've watched their teammates go and start competing and it can suddenly feel like a lifetime. You're used to travelling around, going home, going to training, getting on a plane, going to a meet, and suddenly you've been sat in a team hotel for four or five days as everybody else has got their chance to go and perform. So I think you might like to ease your way into the competition. There's something to do with that. Let's just have a look and see whether there is any... Uh, that looks like the Danes were changing over outside of the zone. Is it the Spanish as well? No, the Spanish are solid. Yeah, the Danes are all over the place there. Not so great from the Danes. 
see that yellow tip on the ground. That's the area that they have to hand over in between. Here's the Danish team. I think they have a look at the javelin rather than that four by 100 meters because Patterson's ready to throw. Yes, here is Artur Pedersen then in the javelin then. Second round. Needs to try and get a measurement in. Ball into the ground in these uh, fairly tough, slippery conditions. Just having a look to see whether it is maybe starting to rain again. I don't think so. It's just quite a lot of moisture in the air. Wind is swirling about a bit. Nicely executed from Pedersen. And he does at least get a valid measurement in, even if it does go off to the right-hand side. 79.90 this year for the Dane. 71.51. So at this point, that is uh, 11th out of 12 in this group. Thomas Roller, though, only 70.66 to start with. Everyone has thrown further. So Roller just drifting off to the left a little with his run up and a javelin coming down just over 70 meters so struggling a little here so we talked about the fact that it's slippy i remember talk of the, over the last couple of years some of the tracks have made it difficult in terms of the surface with uh, some of the better throws and the faster throws struggling to slow down so i don't know what the issue is with uh, Roller, we know that this track isn't quite the same surface as we've had in Tokyo and Eugene, for example. I remember Roller and Vetter both, I think, but certainly Vetter, uh, Johannes Vetter struggling in Gateshead. It was wet there, and they're saying that these older tracks, and we've said that here about this track in Munich, it's not brand new like some of the other championship tracks we get, and perhaps we're a little bit harder to deal with when it's wet. And like I said, just having that confidence when you're sprinting at a line like that, really hard. Well, we've just seen Great Britain, Spain and Italy go through from the first heat of the women's 4x100. Now it's the second heat and on the outside it's a useful French quartet. Anfoué, Joseph, Parisot and Leconte. This is Florian Anfoué with the baton tucked in a vest. We've got cameras at every position. Give me a shout out to all the four women out there for Poland. Stefanovic, Kotila, Popovic, Drapala, and on the anchor leg, the very fast finishing Eva Svoboda. She'll keep Poland in contention, I'm sure. Kojic, Soti, Takash, and Tos for the Hungarians. Big smile there from Oglaka Takash on the third leg. Kubikova, Lamarkova, Kosakshinkova, and Kaisarova for Czech Republic. Germany, well, who was in fine form in the women's 200 meter semis. The lead off leg, Alexander Burgart, Lisa Mayer, Jessica Bianca Vesely, and Rebecca Haas, the very experienced anchor leg runner for Germany. Finland. Well, for the Finns, it's Kyle Minen, Pukinen, Portelamar, and Persianen. And this is a good Dutch quartet as well for this heat. And Ketia Sedo leading off for the Dutch, and she'll be handing over to Zoe Sednam, Minka Bishops, and Naomi Sedney as well. So the two Sedney sisters. And on the inside, Geraldine Frey, Isla Del Ponte, who's decided just to concentrate on the relay. Doesn't feel her form was good enough to contest the individual events. Salome Cora and Melissa Gutschmidt. The Germans you'd have to go with. A bit difficult to pick who might else go through from this heat. Swiss, the Dutch, and also the French all have pretty useful quartets out there. So as they settle into the blocks, it's Switzerland, Netherlands, Finland, Germany, Czech Republic, Hungary, Poland, and France. I overlook the Poles. They could very much be in contention. Set. Well, 
with Poland away very strongly on the opening leg. Also Germany doing well at the moment. Lisa Mayer having a blistering back, back straight. Well, the Poles doing extremely well and France have done well over the last two legs after a slow start. Germany have quite a bit of ground to make up. It's the French who hand over first, but now it's Rebecca Haas trying to chase down her French rival. And Haas is making up the ground. But it's going to be France just holding off Germany. I think it was Poland who got through for third. So a terrific last let by Mallory Leconte to hold off the fast-finishing Rebecca Haas. And Eva Svoboda gets Poland into the final as well. We'll bring you confirmation as well of who the two fastest non-automatic qualifiers are. The Dutch, well, see how they did. 43-24 for France. Not quite as quick as the first leg. 43-33 for Germany and Poland going through in third place, despite the best efforts of Eva Svoboda having to settle for third in that heat. The Dutch, 43-75. And it's the Dutch and the Belgians who go through as the fastest non-automatic qualifiers. I thought it was some sloppy changeovers by the Dutch. To be honest, I was focusing more on the front end and the French and the Germans, but I did catch one or two quite poor changeovers by the Dutch, and that's probably what held them back from the two automatic, three automatic qualifying positions. We'll have a look at that on the replay. Nevertheless, no problems at all. Four very happy French women. And a good final leg by Maria Leconte. Bit of a struggle. Canafua wasn't great on the opening leg, but the French did pick it up very quickly. Ava Svoboda of Poland brought her team through from about sixth, I think, to third. This is the penultimate change over here. We'd already lost Finland at this point. They did carry on. I do think they'll be disqualified very late first change over. At this point, France running superbly well and they were fast and fluent and did good spot there. Switzerland, Alex Seftel pointing them out on the screen. Looks like they could have drifted out of their lane. But Ava Svoboda came powering through. She is pretty much the reason that Polish team are in that top three. And here we can see that first changeover for Finland. Desperately sad there to see they just couldn't quite stretch all the way to get the baton to the receiving runner. Perhaps the receiving runner started too early, went too fast. So many fine margins in the hurdles, in the hurdles, in the relay handovers. But you can see Alex Sefton spotting quite rightly. That final changeover from Switzerland could be scrutinized by the judges. Yeah, it was also a bit sluggish, wasn't it? And I think when you consider that they're a team with uh, Majinka Kambunji, who certainly, I think, would have made them a medal contender come the final, but maybe didn't have the strength in depth to make too many changes, which we can sometimes see. The instant debrief there. It's such a fine balance between trying to learn from these experiences, but also be frustrated if it's not gone quite right. And it's really important to maintain that team unity, whether you've been eliminated and you're looking to next season, or even more importantly, if you've got a final to try and get yourself together for. It's a real team effort. Over the years, Germany have produced so many very, very good women's 4x100 relay teams. I don't see them as sharp on this occasion. I think the overwhelming favourites are going to be Great Britain, Northern Ireland going into that final. And there's the full lineup and confirmation that Belgium and the Netherlands are going through as the fastest non-automatic qualifiers. I mean, Germany were over a second slower than they were when they picked up the bronze medal at the World Championships. And we'd hope Gina Luckenkampfer isn't injured and that she can come, but they're also missing Tatiana Pinto from their bronze medal winning team. This is the replay showing the disqualification of Austria. This was in the first heat, so they were late. Again, that yellow tick on the ground. They need to have passed the, hand, the baton over before they hit that yellow tick. And unfortunately, the team there just right on top of it. So that will be a disqualification for Austria. Pity for them, but fortunately, it doesn't affect the overall result. So this is Elena Valotigara. Took two attempts to get over 178. So I sometimes like to joke in these morning qualifying, probably needs another coffee. It's, it's OK. And you were making the point about the jumpers coming in at early heights. And I think that's a very good point. They've been sitting around 
for four days now they're in action i think it's also a lot to do with the cool conditions as well this morning which is certainly a vast difference to what we had over the first four days here's morgan lake 183 for the britain nicely over for her as well Time jump for late. Qualifying conditions, 194 or the top 12. I very much doubt we'll need to go up to 194. Morgan Lake, another athlete working with Robbie Gratz. I wonder if I have seen him round and about. I haven't seen him in the crowd so far. So this is Mirella Demireva, always a big competitor when it counts Olympic silver medal in 2016 and that's a terrific jump there from the Dutch baseball Garian Demireva having she had a good indoor season didn't she we haven't seen her for a few years in the outdoors it's, it's coming together Demireva one of those athletes you'd put an asterisk next to and say really capable of a medal such fine margins as you move through those fouls Ereshenko well, as we were mentioning with a lot of the Ukraine athletes, went straight from the World Indoor Championships in Belgrade, which were just a couple of weeks after the Russian invasion, based herself in Portugal for a while, and has subsequently moved around a little bit. Has been seen quite frequently on the international circuit. Great friend of Marina Bekramanchuk, and the story there is after the Russian invasion, Bet Romanchuk was living in one of the safer parts of Romaine and basically just told Heroshenko to pack her bags and come over. And this is one of the new sensations of world high jumping. 196, Estonian took the world under 20 gold medal in Cali and has equaled the world under 18 record. World under 18 best, I should say. No official records at that age group. Nicely done at 183 for Bruce of Estonia. She really has had, a, had one of the busiest seasons as well, hasn't she? Because she was at the European under 18, then the World Championships, then the World under 20s, and now here. But funnily enough, she had a bit of a disaster, didn't she, in Jerusalem, and didn't even medal when you would have expected her to. Somebody who's in trouble here is Yulia Levchenko. World Championship silver medalist in 2017 gets it right this time, but takes three efforts to get over 183. Levchenko has had a tough time, spent the first week or so of the Russian invasion in her bunker, in her in her cellar, and she was posting photos on Instagram of the situation where she was living. And I think, as I say. A lot of the Ukraine athletes have had all sorts of different circumstances. Some have been fortunate to live in parts of Ukraine that's been less affected by the war. Some like Lubchenko uh, had to take shelter and spend several weeks when they've been unable to train at all in any way, shape or form. Our first look at the women's 800 metre semi-finals. Two mornings back to back for these 800 metre women. It's a pretty tough qualification, to be honest. Three rounds in three days. We used to see that a lot more here at the European Championships. It's a bit unusual for some of these athletes. They're going to try and navigate that in a few minutes. Two rounds of the javelin, if you can make it through. Qualification and then the final. So this is uh, Pettersson looking ideally for 76 metres, which he has managed this year. But not so on this occasion. So finishing here with a best of around 72 metres and that's just not going to be good enough I'm afraid we've already seen uh, Vesely go over 79 Tony Kusala as well just a centimetre between them 79 27 79 26 and uh, the others all 77 and below Realistically, you want to try and get in the top six overall, if not better. 76-67 of Manu Quijera of Spain. 
as we have a look at the second group as well. So this is Jakob Samuelsson of Sweden. The high society of France there. Back to the high jump. And this is Marilorn's young Fleisch. Bronze medalist four years ago in Berlin. And nicely over, 187. Still an awful lot of women in this competition. Just looking down, we've only lost two women from this particular group, Group A. That's Bakstika of Lithuania and Lala of Finland. So we've still got ten women in this group. In Group B. Pretty packed as well, Group B. Say group A, this is Group B. Perishenko jumping in Group B as well. Brought the bar down. First time of asking at 183. No problems though this time around. We lost Laura Zala Zylor from this group, the Briton. She no heighted at 178. More women went out at 183. That included Erica Fulani, Ella Janilla, and Barbara Zabo. Bit of a surprise to see Janilla going out. She had such a good indoor season. There are the women for semi final one of the 800 meters down on the track. Qualification pretty much went to form. We lost Horvat of Slovenia. All the other kind of big favourites going through. This is Adriana Chapla of Poland, part of that very fast opening heat where all the non automatic qualifiers came from. She has gone underneath two minutes this season. Great strength and depth in the Polish endurance team as normal. Natalia Kroll of Ukraine is a two time defending champion. She's here in lane seven. to Amsterdam and Berlin, followed home by Renel Lamotte of France that we'll see in the next heat. Anna Bielgosz of Poland, always super strong in the last 50 metres. Watch out for a strong finish from the Polish athlete. She was fifth in Berlin four years ago and has improved since then. 159.84, her new personal best set this year. Kitty Hodgkinson of Great Britain and Northern Ireland goes in lane five. Such a cool customer. So much pressure on her young shoulders and it rarely shows when she races. So close to that World Championship gold just behind Athing Mo. And then a silver in the Commonwealth Games behind Mervy Mora. And it's no surprise that Keely Hodgkinson would love to pick up a gold here at the European Championships to finish off her championship season. Louise Shanahan of Ireland set a new national record this year in Belfast, 159.42. She's doing a PhD in Cambridge. It's a very accomplished young woman's had some disruptions with illness. Let's hope she's back to her best here for these semi-finals. Elena Bello of Italy, really canny competitor, very good tactically. It's going to be a great year. First Italian woman under two minutes since Eliza Cosmo Puccini back in 2010. She front ran her heat, I think perhaps because of the shoving that went on in Eugene. She was really poorly affected when Katarina Bissett of Australia went to the ground. Katarina Gudiev of Turkey goes in lane two. Season's best of 201.08 this season. Completing the lineup in lane one is the young German athlete Matja Kohlberg. She went sub two last season, hasn't quite managed that this season, but always full of smiles, always runs aggressively and positively. She's still just 22, semi final at the World Championships. She was the last woman in to this final in that super fast first heat. Now, Lena Bello, as I said, she led her heat. That's not normal for the Italian there in lane three. Normally loves to hang out just on the inside of the rail, work her way through a group and launch a fantastic sprint finish. But perhaps, like I said, nervous after what went on in Eugene. There's no point in being in fantastic shape if you can't make a final. Keely Hodgkinson often leads these races from the front, controls them. Coached by Trevor Painter, guided Jenny Meadows to European medals and world medals. 
Jenny Meadows was a master at controlling races from the front, and Keely Hodgkinson can certainly do that. I do think the British woman might do that here at the semi-final stage. Like I said, three races in three days is pretty tough going. Keely Hodgkinson with the biggest sort of ceiling, if you like, in terms of absolute ability with her personal best of 155.88. And she has got the endurance. We don't see Keely run 1500s, but we know she can navigate the rounds pretty well. Anna Vilgosh. I said watch out for a sprint finish. Maybe we should have looked out for a sprint start as well. Underneath 30 seconds quite significantly for Anna Vilgosz of Poland as she leads the field through. Healy Hodgkinson very content to glide to the position on the shoulder of the leader. I love that position. You're controlling the race without actually leading it. Putting that pressure on Vilgosz and Healy Hodgkinson bounding along, looking very comfortable. Louise Shanahan choosing to take the shortest line on the inside. Vilgosh drifts at all, expect Louise Shanahan to nip through the inside. Gulia of Turkey just working her way past Bello. They come through the bell, 60.79, so that slowed slightly. Perhaps Vilgosh just giving herself a good position without wanting to show all her cards because Vilgosh is capable of so much faster. Could be a big burn up in the last 300 metres. All to fight for. First three automatically qualified to tomorrow evening's final. Guliev is poised on the outside. Louise Shanahan of Ireland trying to live with those top two on the inside. Keely Hodgkinson just trying to force her way past Anna Vilgosh of Poland. Will she manage it before we hit the turn? Keely Hodgkinson's going to need to just keep pushing for another couple of metres. If she wants that inside line, she probably doesn't need it, to be honest. Keely Hodgkinson happy to run in the middle of lane one, leaving Anna Vilgosh a little bit of space on the inside. Good sportsmanship there from Keely Hodgkinson. 100 metres to go. They're kicking hard. Top three automatically qualified. Keely Hodgkinson of Great Britain starting to show the rest of the field a pair of clean heels. There she goes, Keely Hodgkinson, the Olympic silver medalist, world championship silver medalist. And it's tight for the third position behind. Anna Vilgosh qualifies as a right, as does Louise Shanahan. And what a brilliant run from the Irish woman. Contracted COVID in the middle of the season. We weren't sure whether she was going to get that negative test in time to go to the World Championships, and she did. And holds off strong challenges all around. Guliev of Turkey and Kohlberg of Germany were doing everything they could to deny Louise Shanahan that automatic spot. Two dead 67, so pretty even splits through the two quarters for that field. Hodgkinson strong in the latter stages. Vilgosh again with a great last 50 metres. Louise Shanahan, delight for the Irish woman. She's had a really complicated season. Season's best for Mattia Kohlberg. Great effort. We'll have to wait to see if Kohlberg and Gudiev can advance with their times. Well, it's always so uh, easy to forget that Keely Hodgkinson only has, what, 12 to 18 months of senior international championship experience. She won the European indoor title in Torin in Poland just a few days after turning 19. But she has a, such fantastic racing now. She has great speed as well of an athlete with a much older head on her young shoulders and was just able to deal with the challenge of Vilgosh. I'm sure the other athletes paying her some respect as well. Shanahan, though, terrific to see her qualify because it was so, so close there on the line. Looked like uh, Guliev was on the outside and uh, Kroll, I think, was on the inside just trying to battle her. Kohlberg was in the mix as well. Just coming down that home straight, Shanahan found something extra. And very simple in the end. Hodgkinson would always be expected to make it through to the final fairly comfortably. They did keep her on her toes for some time, and Guliev and Kohlberg, they'll have to wait and see whether their times are good enough. Around that 2.012, 2.013 mark. So now Tatiana Gusin, now 28 years of age, formerly a student in the United States, nicely over at 1 meter 87. Goosin, Balkan champion back in 2017. Good technique there from Goosin. It was the best of 191 going back to 2017, but looking as though she could challenge that perhaps. This is the Slovenian, Lea Apostolovsky. Solovsky, a best of 192, seven times Slovenian champion. Uh, Clicks it with the back of her calves, but 
the bar stays there. Tall, rangy athlete. Third in last year's European Under-23 Championships in Tallinn. So an emerging talent, just 22 years of age. to four women over 187 in Group B. 17 women overall were still in the women's high jump qualifying with the bar raised to 187, so it could be that 187 is the deciding height. Semi-final two with the women's 800 metres. The first one wasn't particularly fast. They can go through in around about 58 seconds. I could think I think we could see non-automatic qualifiers from this. Angelique Sana, we've just seen Anna Vilgos, her teammate, advance in the first heat. Very fast 400 meter runner. Laura Hoffman of Switzerland's been working on her 1500 meter strength this season and then kind of nip back into 800. She wasn't quite content with uh, her 1500 meter performances, didn't want to go to the championships over that distance. Maybe next year, Laura Hoffman with that strength will finish really strongly. Gemma Riki of Great Britain and Northern Ireland goes in lane six. She was fourth at the Olympic Games, was so brave in that final, went for a medal, came up just short. I said earlier in this programme, she has glandular fever during the indoor season and is just working her way back into the season. She is looking better with every performance. Alexandra Bell joins her teammate from Great Britain and Northern Ireland in lane five. She was sick at the Commonwealth Games. Was the Olympic finalist last year, 157.66. Sandra Bell rounding into form as well. Renal Lamotte of France is sitting on two silver medals. We've just seen the defending champion Natalia Kroll go out in the previous heat. Renal Lamotte would love to upgrade her silver to gold. She's looked really impressive on the Diamond League circuit. Didn't quite recreate that in Oregon at the World Championships. But Lamotte knows her way around the European finals. Let's hope she can make another one. Christina Herring of Germany is in lane three. Her teammate, Matthew Kohlberg, is sitting in the fastest with the non-automatic qualifying spots. Herring is a really good championship performer. Uh, if anyone was going to lead this race, make it fast. I think it could be Sara Kavisto of Finland. Four national records in Tokyo last year as she progressed through the rounds of the 800 and the 1500. And, uh, no stranger to pushing on the pace. And Spanish champion in lane one, Lucia Panaccio. She did a personal best. I mean, fourth in that super fast opening heat yesterday, 201.63. First race, they came through just outside of 60 seconds and pretty evenly across those two laps. Just 201.2 and 201.32, the times for Kohlberg and Guliev in the non-automatic qualifying spots. <laughs> and they're away. Now we'll mock Gemma Riki. Alex Bell all in this heat, who would love to make the final one of some of the fastest times in the last few years, especially from European athletes. Pretty even at the break there, no one's really gone from this. I thought Cabisto might have a go, but she's happy to slot into the group. Renelle Lamotte takes up the lead at the moment. Christina Herring has the inside line. That's a good move from the tall German athlete. She does manoeuvre her way around the group particularly well. Christina Herring. In front of a home crowd at the moment, Renel Lamotte on her shoulder. Alex Bell just slotted into third place at the moment. Laura Hoffman is a very canny racer, the Swiss woman on the outside. She'll be looking at the clock. If this isn't 59-58, I'd expect Laura Hoffman maybe to be the athlete to keep pushing. Christina Herring at the moment leading the field through the first lap. Let's have a look. Could they get their non-automatic qualifying spots? That's very good, 59-1. And that's given a lot of these women a bit more belief that they could get into the final. But the first three spots will be automatic. Everybody will have their focus on that. Christina Herring holding the lead, a gun to take run from the German woman so far. If she can hold on to this, that'll be a race of her season, I think, from Christina Herring. But the charges are coming from behind. Here comes Sarah Cavisto of Finland. She's got strength in the latter stages. I said Laura Hoffman's been working on her 1500. Gemma Riki was a brilliant fifth in the Commonwealth Games, 1500 in her second event. 
all to fight for. 180 meters to go. This is a massive group. Three automatic qualifiers. Everybody is trying to empty the tank. Gemma Riki just sticking on the inside there. She's going to need Christina Herring to drift wide if she's going to move up through this field. Christina Herring at the moment tight, holding on, but she's tying up. Gemma Riki sneaking through on the inside. Renelle Lamotte, Alex Bell of Great Britain and Northern Ireland finishing strongly as well. It is going to be Renelle Lamotte taking the win from Gemma Riki, Alex Bell, and a tired Christina Herring in third. Has she done enough to get herself into the final? Slow second lap there in the end, 61 seconds. Well, Ronel Lamotte just seems to be at home at the European Championships. Hasn't always achieved the level that you think she might be capable of on the World and Olympic stage, but maybe she just feels comfortable like she can challenge once again. Christina Herring led out the charge, and then a lot of athletes, including uh, Gemma Reek, end up quite boxed in and struggling for space as Herring perhaps saved something for the last to try and finish strongly. Just beaten there by Lamar. I think uh, Gemma Rika was a little bit lucky that she was able to just squeeze through enough to make it in second place ahead of her teammate Bell. So Gunia reading the race right and thinking she's not made it through. She's correct. It's Herring and Hoffman, the two non-automatic qualifiers. Oh, what a hard moment. Mattia Kohlberg and Christina Herring do all of their training together. They've got up in somewhere. It's training hard this season. I'll tell you what, that was a terrifically entertaining race. Just three tenths over the first three women home and then less than a second over the first five. I'm a bit old school. That was a real battle royal. I really enjoyed that race. It wasn't one woman with all with all respect to Keely Hodgson, who you knew was going to qualify as of right. It was really up for dispute right the way down to the line. Five women in it as they're coming into the home straight and then just a, a wonderful contest with everybody having to dig deep, grit their teeth and go for the line. In the end, following Lamotte home, it was the two Olympic finalists, Gemma Riki and Alexandra Bell. I do think, I mean, Gemma Riki, it's, she didn't have much choice. She was on that inside and there was a huge pack. There was nothing she could do about trying to swing wide. There were far too many bodies in her way. But the minute there was an opening, Christina Herring drifted wide. Gemma Riki responded really well. She struggled in back-to-back -back races since her glandular fever, Gemma Riki, and that was the most impressive I've seen her. And I think uh, hats off to Christina Herring for making that a hard-run race throughout. And Laura Hoffman, I think that could be her first major championship outdoor final, the Swiss woman, and that slow-mo showing she had her shoelace untied. What could she do if she manages to keep those shoelaces in line? Well, I must admit, I also smiled just before the gun went because I saw a large group of the Christina Herring fan club and they're all holding up posters with big silvery fishies on or, uh, you know, drawings of fishies on it. <laughs> I thought it was only myself and Alex who made bad puns. <laughs> <laughs> no, we uh, enjoyed a lot of your puns so far in the coverage. That's the compiled results of the two semi-finals. Confirming Laura Hoffman and Christina Herring and non-automatic spots going together with those top threes. Three Brits, that makes for some good reading for any British fans out there. But Renelle Lamotte, it'd be brilliant to see her convert her two silver medals into a gold. And great to see the home nation, Christina Herring and Germany in the final. So this is Elena Valortigada. Her first attempt at 187, just recorded a little while ago we've already seen four women go over had a little wobble at 178 needed two attempts to get over but no problems at all for the italian really coming into form this year still hasn't taken off her training tights nicely done So just an update on some of the action we've already seen down there. We're hearing that the Turkish team have protested their men's relay result and then they might get a rerun. It's like the belay in the men's decathlon. It'd be one to look forward to. So this is Vukasevic from Group A. The Montenegrin nicely over as well. Montenegrin record holder. At one time, her indoor record was actually higher than the men's. That goes back a few years. Montenegro and high jumping's come on a little bit. Former European under-20 champion back in 2000 and 2009. Yeah, she's been around a long time, but really having a very good season. 
This is the young Serbian. Topic. One almost at ease the European under 18 title. Surprisingly beaten by Bruce of Estonia in the World Under 20 Championships, both of them in the under 18 ranks, but Topic jumping well here. I'm sure her father, the former European champion Dragutin Topic, is somewhere in the stands. I'm looking out there. I haven't seen him yet, but I'm pretty confident as he's his coach, as he'll be around somewhere. Veerman of the Netherlands. She's nicely over as well. So Britt Veerman gets over. So we've got three women over in Group A. This is Salon Chiquel. Her father, Jean-Claude, still the French record holder at 2 metres 35. Well, nudges the bar a little bit, but gets over, and that's all that matters at this stage. No extra points for style. Fast into the bar, gets good lift, takes off a little bit too far away, but has enough velocity to take her over, despite dragging her legs a little bit behind. Just clips it with what looks like a card. Jaquel adds her name to that list in Group B. Six women over in Group B. Morgan Lake. Former British record holder. Very fast on the run-up. Clears without too many problems. Disappointing summer so far for Morgan Lake. Travelled all the way out for, to Eugene. Mm, couldn't compete, couldn't collect her accreditation because she couldn't get a negative COVID test after contracting it just at the start of her trip over to America. And talking to her coaching team, she's sort of a matter of about 12 hours away from being able to collect her accreditation in time to compete. So long old trip for no action for Morgan Lake. Looking a lot more comfortable here in Munich. And confident as well. I was watching her in the Commonwealth Games when she had an England vest on. And she really did lack a little bit of confidence there and finished fourth when I thought she was fully capable of getting amongst the medals. So on to the first seat of the men's 4x4. Four four. Spitz who competed in the individual with a fantastic peaked win. And the Portuguese team, uh, Coelho, Pereira, Tavares, and uh, Dos Santos. And he is just uh, towards the back of shot previously. Burs, Bonavassia, slightly disappointing for him to be outside of the medals in the individual event. Ramsey, uh, Angela will bring them home. So two out of the world indoor winning relay quartet. Schlegel, Schneider, Koch and uh, Sanders for the Germans who could once again be strong. We saw them break the 4 by one national record earlier. For Spain, so Oscar Husios in the team for the heat, which is good to see. Garcia, Bua and uh, Guillaro, the others making up the team. Slovenia have Gertwin, Mesek Koshir, Gucek and Perlan. And then the Belgians with uh, two Borle brothers and the opportunity to bring in Kevin for the final. Doom and uh, Sakor also involved. Van der Benden was in the 4x1 relay. Really do have strength in depth and it's not just the Borle's. Tuba, Zimni, Trenishak and Zalewski. There he is for Poland on the inside. Not having the best season, but still an important part of this Polish relay quartet. So, once again, fairly simple. Top three in each heat and then two time qualifiers across the pair of runs with the next one coming up in around 10 minutes time, which will feature the likes of France Italy and Great Britain. In this one, Poland, Belgium, Slovenia, Spain, 
Germany, the Netherlands, Portugal and Switzerland. So here we are with the first of the 4x400 meter action. The women's heats coming up after the men's. Well, Poland and the Netherlands traditionally strong and winning quite a few international medals over the last few years. Of course, we've also had the innovation of the mixed re relay of the World Championships and Olympic Games. Let's have a look as we wait for the stagger to unwind on the second leg, of course. Going nicely is uh, Burrs of the Netherlands battling with uh, Coelho. Switzerland there on the outside. Spitz has had an impressive championship so far. New lifetime best earlier in the competition. Jonathan Borle. Well, so difficult to make it into the Belgian team, in fact, these days. Two brothers, both faster this year. Kevin, 45.12, the best Belgian in 2022. Spain just leading with uh, Lucas Bua. Trying to hold off uh, Lina Martin Bonavassia, who now comes to the front and looks to finish his second leg strongly. Poland well back in last place at this point. I hope for much better in the uh, women. 4x4, four four, the defending champions, of course. Netherlands now starting to eke out that advantage, but I'm sure Hasios will try and respond. Top three going through automatically. Germany and Switzerland behind. So Joachim Dobber on this third leg, being reeled in by Husios, looking determined, gritting his teeth. And the Germans in a relatively comfortable third place just at this moment, but it could all change. Dylan Borle will have a bit of work to do. So, Ramsey Angela of the Netherlands, Villaro of Spain, following him closely. Just beginning to close up, Zalewski making moves, passing two athletes, now ahead of uh, De Santos of Portugal. But can the Borlays make it in? Of course, two-time qualifying spots if you're outside the top three. Dylan Borlay fighting, but at the front, Guiardo of Spain comes past Angler of the Netherlands. And look at this between Germany and Belgium on the line. Oh, so, so close. But certainly, Spain and the Netherlands are through to that final. 3.01.27 has come up. So fastest time by Spanish quartet this year. And it was a strong one as well. The Netherlands will be bringing the likes of uh, Van Diepen. Perhaps for that final three tenths behind in the end, having led most of the way round. Nail-biting moments for the German quartet. They ran well, they ran bravely. When you've got the likes of Belgium hunting you down, it has been given to the Germans. 301.8. Let's see what the time is for the Belgian quartet, because that was super close on the line. There are two best times available. You can see that graphic in the right-hand corner, the little queue of the automatic qualifying going to the home nation. Good run from Spain. Good from Ramsey Angler as well. He, he perhaps looks slightly uncomfortable in the hurdles. But was he? Did he take part in the 400 meter hurdles? Am I making that up? Or was he on the flat? I think. Um, yeah, I seem to recall that he did. Now Belgium, they ran uh, three out of the four who won the gold medal four years ago. I mentioned though Jonathan Paulay not having the best season. Let's have a look here. Dylan closing quickly. Did dip on the line, but ultimately was just behind. Good showing from the Dutch team. They've really asserted themselves as a relay force. 
in the last couple of years, you weren't used to seeing them do it and it just gone from strength to strength to strength. The women's team perhaps, I don't know, it's hard to say, the men's quartet picking up a medal in Tokyo as well, the mixed relay, they're doing really well. They don't quite look like they're firing on all cylinders. See that photo finish there, Marvin Schiegel just getting a nod ahead of Dylan Borlay. We haven't got a time for the um, Flemish quartet yet. It's got to be down to the thousands, perhaps. Part of the problem, I think, for Belgium is that they've relied for so long on the Borlay family. Dylan, Jonathan and Kevin. Time is just taking its toll. It's the law of diminishing returns. They're just getting a little bit older. Kevin's now 36, I think and uh, these younger, fresher legs coming in on the other teams. Still competitive, though. Just wondering whether they're going to bring in Julian Watrin. As we look at Yaroslava Mahuchi. Well, she failed the first attempt, chopped a stride, but had such lift that she was able to elevate herself over the bar without any problems. This was Mahuchik's opening height. Massive, massive clearance. That was despite it being a little bit technically inept. I'm sure her coach, I could see her coach, Tatiana Stepanova, out there. This is Mirella Demereva. She's feeling confident when I chatted to her yesterday, and uh, that's a good reason why. Nicely done for the silver medalist from four years ago in Berlin. Tidy clearance there, perhaps not quite the gap between the bar and her torso that Mao Chick had, but nevertheless nicely done from Mirella Demareva. So we've got five women clear in this group. Uh, Yulia Levchenko now. She's in group B. Has been struggling Levchenko. This is a clutch jump. Ooh! Gets over. It lives to fight another day. And I have to say now, with Levchenko going clear, just doing my math, it's 13 women clear at 187. I think everybody's finished. I'm just looking across. Yeah, Levchenko was one of the last to finish. This was uh, recorded just a couple of minutes ago. I think the referees are progressing all 13 women through to tomorrow's final. No need to go up a height and try and eliminate one person. Common sense decision. Uh, this is Bruce. This is, again, the recording from a moment ago. World Under-20 champion, just bringing it down. Well, we've seen a couple of the Under-20 competitors who did so well in Cali. Just struggling a little bit here. I don't think it's actually the level of competition or anything to do with confidence. I think it's just going backwards and forwards from Colombia. And at a young age as well, when you're not necessarily used to all that travel. So a, a free throw of Israel in the men's 200. In the end, he did advance as a non-automatic qualifier, but he struggled as well. Angelika Topic has done very well winning that world under eight, European under-18 title. And then a bronze at the World Juniors now coming through to make, I think, another senior final. I think she made, she's made some senior finals before. So there we have the full wrap-up of all the women who qualified. And the women with one by the name were the ones who were flawless in qualifying. All the way down to Yuli Levchenko, who needed three attempts to get over 187. 13 women will progress. Not too many surprises, everybody who went through was expected maybe Erica Fellani, the Italian, just going out. Might have expected to see her in the final. So now it's the men's 4x400 meters second heat. On the outside, it's the always useful Italian quartet, led off by Benetti, Assetti, the former European under 20 champion. Lopez and Pivotti. On their inside, the Ukraine squad of Postanelikov, Danilenko, Babanov, and Podolilko. Good French quartet. Biron, who we saw in the individual 400, Trevor, Boypa, 
Nanterre. Slow Rat Republic, good lead off leg. Press it to the world indoor champion on many occasions, Pavel Maslak, Desenko, and Patrick Storm on the last leg. That is a good team from the Czech Republic. Hungary's team, Aide, Mate, Oal, and Molna. Perhaps not one of the stronger teams in this heat. Turkey, Kaya, Ensu, Altintas, and Nezir. Well, the Turks over the last few years have produced a slew of good 400 meter runners. I think they could be in contention for a place in the final. And on the inside, Great Britain with Briar, Mitchum, Davey, and the individual bronze medalist Alex Haydock Wilson on the anchor leg. Not perhaps one of the stronger British teams we've seen over the years, but should be good enough to make their way through to the final. So as they settle in to the blocks from the inside, it's Great Britain, Northern Ireland, Turkey, Hungary, Czech Republic, Slovak Republic, France, Ukraine, and on the outside, Italy. Well, the stagger doesn't unwind until into the second leg. So it's often slightly deceptive telling who's in the lead, but certainly at the moment, Josie Breyer on the outside for Great Britain, Northern Ireland, running blind, but he's having a good leg. So too the Czech Republic, with Martin Kresak leading the way at the moment. Oh, Josie Breyer doing well. French lead-off runner Gilles Bidon also up there. So at the moment, France, Great Britain and Czech Republic right away ahead of the rest. Italy also running extremely well at the moment. I should say it was Italy doing well at this stage, but France now taking over, like Brevot. Brevot being trapped by Pavel Maslak, second leg runner Vladimir Assetti. Great Britain, Northern Ireland back and forth, quite a long way to make up at this stage. Well, they've got two stronger runners on the concluding legs. So it's a sete of Italy. Now it's France with Simon Boypark. Perhaps the weakest of the four runners from the Czech Republic, Desensky. Britain. Northern Ireland trying to close the gap, making some headway. It's Brian Lopez at the back of the leading quarter trio, and it's now about to become a quartet with some good work on this third leg from the Britain. So Lewis Davy has run an excellent leg to bring Great Britain, Northern Ireland back into contention. Brian Lopez now edging round his Czech and French counterparts, handing over, and indeed, what an excellent leg from Lewis Davy, and he hands over to Alex Haydock Wilson. Now, Haydock Wilson, hopefully not too tired after last night's exertions, but it's three to go through. Czech Republic in the lead with Patrick Zorn, very experienced relay runner. France in second, Great Britain, Northern Ireland third, and now Italy's just starting to drift off the back. Pivotti losing contact with the leading trio, but it's Sorm with France's Amdan 
challenging coming up on the outside Haydock Wilson being pushed wide almost out into the fourth lane oh Pivotti tumbles to the track as he tries to battle for a place in the top three he's not too badly injured maybe a, a bruise or two but France and Great Britain also get through behind the Czech Republic Czech Republic good run there from that quartet they don't really have too many other people well realistically nobody else to bring in both France and Great Britain can strengthen their quartet with bringing in people for the final we'd certainly expect to see Matthew Hudson Smith in there and Italy well 302 60 for the Italians that sees them through at the expense of Poland and the defending champions, two-time defending champions, Belgium, get through the back door into the final as the fastest non-automatic qualifier as well. Good run from the Czech Republic. So much experience on that squad and they really brought it all to a four there. The Italians doing well to hold on in the end. You can see the Italian hit, got the baton in the lead. Slipped that through the field a little bit and he was fighting so hard in these closing stages. There was a bit of alignment kind of going on down that home straight. And, uh, the Italian happy to run wide and it's great to see him get that normal automatic qualifying spot for his team. And another loose shoelace, Alex Haydock Wilson. Uh, the <laughs> failing to tie his shoelace is much like Laura Hoffman in the women's 800 meters. Come on, guys. Basics. I don't think he noticed, did he? He was just flying down, just battling for a place. Matthew Hudson-Smith, the individual 400-meter runner, ran the third leg on the British team that got the silver medal four years ago. And just wondering where they were going to introduce him in this quartet. I'd put him on the anchor leg. Where would you guys put him? Maybe first and fourth? No, I'm joking. <laughs> but yeah, they also say, you know, that, that second leg's a, a tiny bit longer. So you might want to put your strongest athlete there, but Perhaps on the on the uh, closing leg, because even if they're behind the likes of Belgium, maybe the Czech Republic, um, you'd fancy Matthew Hudson-Smith's uh, chances of powering through the field. I have to say that even though Great Britain and Northern Ireland finished third there, I hope our international listeners are not thinking we're being too parochial, but throw in Hudson-Smith and I think you have to make Great Britain and Northern Ireland the favourites. So... We have seen uh, the conclusion of those two men's 4x4 relay heats. The women's will follow in a few moments' time. We've got the second group of javelin qualification for the men. So let's check in and see how they're doing. We saw Thomas Roller, by the way, the defending champion, go out with a best of 71 metres. Has really struggled this year, hasn't regained that kind of form from Berlin after surgery a couple of years ago, but still disappointing for one of the home favorites, even if he struggled this year. This is uh, Alexandru Novak of Romania. I remember the European, European under 20s a couple of years ago, he was uh, beaten out of the gold medal with the very last throw from uh, Cyprian Merciglod of Poland. But still a great competitor. So also in this group, we've got uh, Julian Weber, of Germany and his teammate Andreas Hoffmann. So even though those two haven't had as much international recognition as Johannes Vetter and Thomas Roller, they're still very capable of challenging for gold. As we see there, that effort of Novak. 77-68 for the first round. So Julian Weber, 89-54 this year. Actually only sixth on the German all-time list, such as their strength over the years so Julian Weber and that could be the first throw over 80 meters across both pools of qualification Julian Weber so many uh, nearly performances fourth at the Olympics fourth at the World Championships he looked really good in qualification in Eugene as well and then he, I mean he did recreate that form and it's just gutting every time everyone else seems to find another meter meter and a half I would love to see Julian Weber triumph in front of a home crowd lots of big personalities and brilliant athletes in this field across the two pools 
But Julian Weber, for me, I feel like he just deserves deserves a special moment here in Munich. Yeah, could well get one. We're looking here at Timothy Herman of Belgium, also capable of over 80 metres. 78.35 this year, down the runway, launches explosively dramatic dive down to the ground so Herman over 75 this time so Weber best overall not only in this group B but across the two pools and looking strong Thomas Roller is actually saying that not only for himself he's only thrown 72 meters this year so actually he came in with quite a he said an open mind, which kind of means he had low expectations. But he's saying that we have to get used to the fact that 2018-2019 uh, was a, a real golden era for German javelin throwing. And people maybe had uh, come accustomed to that and difficult to match. But as a result of the Germans being so strong, three throws over 90 meters in one competition, that does change the world standard a little bit. Lassie Telatalo, he, following the retirement of uh, Pitkamaki and the Ruskanen, I was saying, as I was saying, he's kind of replaced them in the major finals, has done a good job of qualifying and finishing fourth and sixth. However, hasn't quite got onto the rostrum. So maybe this is his opportunity. There's also a good finish into team battle. Oliver Halander having to pull out through injury someone who soldiered on into the Olympic final when he was clearly really struggling after Ruskin in the reserve didn't want to go all the way to Tokyo as he wasn't in the best form Holanda it was horrible to see him wincing in pain after throwing each time Etalatalo though that should be good enough 79-29 with his first round effort as we have a look back at that uh, men's 4x4 four four second relay heat from a few moments ago. Sean just ahead of the French quartet and then Haydock Wilson. Phil pointed out at the time it was a great leg by Lewis Davy to get Britain back into contention to make it to the top three. So there we have the results from the men's 4x400 four meters relay led by the Spanish quartet with 301.27. National record for the Portuguese, even though they don't make it through to the final with 303.59. A proud moment for a squad. I think we talk about medals, we talk about finals, and uh, for the honor of pulling on your nation's vest, and Portuguese can walk away here from Munich, say we were the fastest ever four by four squad from our nation. That's a bit of fun. Well, they're also in the same hotel as us. We'll give them a little clap if we bump into them later. <laughs> Yeah, noise in our hotel ramping up day by day, I think, as the athletes finish their championships, which is fun to hear. And, uh, this is the heat one of the women's 4x4, featuring a very strong Polish squad. Great Britain, Northern Ireland, coming off their bronze medal at the World Championships. Natalia Kaczmar at that individual silver medalist making her way through the picture. They're going to... Same as the men, going to be looking for first three automatically through to the final, and then the next two. Over to Andreas Hoffman, looking to do exactly what his teammate Julian Weber did a moment ago. So foul in the opening round. Does he get a valid attempt here? Look like it. So Hoffman does indeed that green indicator over 92 meters in uh, Offenburg in Germany in 2018 and likes to look at that 77 meters 29 centimeters for Hoffman and the two teammates pleased with what they probably think will be good enough because at slippery conditions earlier it's dried out a little but still plenty of moisture in the air. So here is Jakob Vadlec, the Olympic silver medalist, lifetime best in Doha this year for the 31 year old. Behind uh, Anderson Peters, who's had a fantastic season. 1988 for Vadlec at the start of the season. So another who needed to get a good mark in after that initial failure. And there is Jan Zalesny here mentoring 
the Czech thrower Zelezny, who in 2006, aged 40, won his uh, last senior international medal, the world record holder. Van Lech then, 81-81 for the Czech. Also, we saw Barbara Spatakova qualify for the women's final as well. So, these are probably their biggest medal hopes. Vadlec and Vesely always seem to find a way to get on the podium, even in tricky conditions. And we talk about the situation with the track at the Olympics last year. Obviously, Niraj Chopra of India taking the gold there, but behind him, Vadlec and Vesely made the best of. Uh, those conditions where the faster throwers were struggling to slow down in time where you have to come to complete stop. Such an awkward technique to get right. It's a good memory there, Alex. You're right, it was most in that, to, uh, that Tokyo final as well. Pavlic and Vesely really do know how to bring their best. We didn't have Vesely at the World Championships uh, with suffering with illness there. And here comes Julian Weber again. He qualifies so well so often. He's having a brilliant season, a number of top threes on the circuit, Doha Diamond League, Hengelo. Stockholm as well, you can always get in the top three in a Diamond League and then yet to do it in the global finals so far. Let's we'll see if Julian Weber can manage that. But we do sometimes see that from the top javelin throwers. It can be all to play for come the final, whether it's the conditions, just getting everything right on the day. Also because of the strain on the shoulder and you're on your elbow and your body, sometimes athletes who go well over 90 meters can't do it many times and can't do it in the big competitions. But javelin finals, some of the most thrilling to watch just in isolation, a pure feed of that to see one after another, who could improve, who's got a good mark on the board and who can then try and pull everything together to get that big, big throw towards the far side of the stadium. So. You've seen Vadlec 81-81. That's the best throw of all. Weber, the only athlete over 80, 80-99, which is around what was needed to make the final in Amsterdam in 2016. So that just tells you quite a lot about how this competition is going. But still gives someone who's having a, a bit of a rough qualification, just easing into it to improve come the final, because that's... Uh, something else you see to throw further in qualification than the final is always disappointing for these throwers the high society of france here let's have a look he 74 70 so far doesn't look to have improved i just pulled up the results from berlin 2018 and i do remember that javelin qualifying was done on a hot sticky morning there and on that occasion we had 10 men over 80 meters, including Johannes Vetter, who's not here, and throwing 87 meters, and Thomas Roller, who is here and defending his title, throwing 85 meters. I think it's the question of these conditions. It's a bit damp, it's a bit cool, it's just not very good conditions for javelin throwing. I think that's widely accepted. And that's why we're seeing these modest marks. Let's keep our fingers crossed that over the weekend it gets a bit better in the evenings and when the gold medals are contested that they've got something some nice warm conditions seen two four by four heats this is our final relay over four by 400 of course all those four by one heats this morning as well it's going to be the women's four by 400 closing out the track action unless we get that rerun for the turkish men four by 100 they might get to go out there on their own see if they can get one of the non-automatic spots norway will go in lane eight Oppengard, Sletten, cluster and vold <laughs> good work there from the norwegian squad to cheer on lynn Oppengard as she's out in lane eight Lane seven will be the Czech Republic, the male counterparts just winning that second four by four heat. Kretsovikova, Kuchova, Ochmanov and Vondrova, the big hitter on the end of their quartet. Hungary will go in lane six, led off by Nikhadzi there, waving to the crowd. And we'll see Bartha, Kerry, Rapai and Molna completing their lineup. Lane five will be Belgium. Naomi van der Broek off first, and Helena Ponet, Pauline Kokut, and Camille Laus. 
Spain go in lane four. Yeah, men look pretty good in that opening heat. And then there, four by four, Eva Sanchez and Keza, Segura and Hernandez. I think it's Great Britain and Northern Ireland took the bronze medal at the World Championships, the top European team in the women's four by four. Zoe Clark and the Pippi weren't part of that medal winning quartet, but Nicole Jurgen and Vian Nielsen were. Lane two is Italy. Polinari will lead them off, then she'll hand over to Lacudo, Triani and Man Mangioni. Completing the lineup in lane one is Poland, the defending champions. They won in Berlin four years ago. It was a brilliant uh, 50 minutes or so for Justina Sviti Ersetic there. She will go on leg three. She took the individual title and then just seemed to ride that wave into the 4x400, pulling her team all the way through to the gold medal. So Marina, top three, automatically qualify, then another two. Great Britain and Northern Ireland, the squad with the fastest season's best by quite a bit. Three minutes, 22 seconds. Polish team just a bit, nine seconds off their best ever. They have struggled a little bit. They weren't quite in tip-top form in Oregon. Have they saved a little bit here for this? We saw Anna Kielbasinska and Natalia Kaczmarek run really well individually. The Polish team look like they're adrift in lane one, but that's a long, long stagger for the Polish team to unwind. At the moment, the graphic on our left-hand side giving Zoe Clark of Great Britain and Northern Ireland the lead. As they move into lane one, they'll stay in lanes. In fact, the first, second leg runner will stay in lanes for another 100 metres. So this is an awfully long stagger. You often have to rely on graphics and some brilliant help being given it to us by the technology in the buttons. Um, but to the naked eye, it's who hands over first. And it is Zoe Clark to Amma Pippi of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Belgium next, Helena Cornet. A good handover with Van der Broek. And they're going to make their way towards the 800 meter break line. That's what's used in the open 800 meters. And they'll glide into lane one. It's often a big kind of tactical battle as they navigate positions into lane one. 400 meter runners individually normally out there on their own. They don't have to get used to that. They use all that experience from their relays. And it was a very smooth, not too many, too much pushing and shoving. And Amma Pippi of Great Britain and Northern Ireland has got quite a big lead. Spanish athlete Bukisa is on a storming second leg, putting the Belgians under pressure. But here come the Poles. It could be a messy second changeover. Nicole Jurgen and Amma Pippi are going to be relieved that they're out of that. And the rest of their field spread out across the track. Thankfully, all the athletes staying on their feet, all the batons handed over, no problem. The order the teams hit the 200 meter mark, the halfway through their leg, and that is the order that they're lined up on, um, the athletes that will be receiving the baton. But there was a lot of change in that second 200 on the second leg, and that led to a little bit of chaos. And to be honest, the Polish team were storming down the home straight and then just had to battle with a lot of traffic. And that pushed them back into fifth place. Shashina Sviti Ersetic working hard to get the Poles back into contention. The Belgium team are back in second place and it's a strong finish again from the Spanish team. Just a repeat of the second leg. Nicole Jürgen of Great Britain and Northern Ireland working hard to stay in the front. Belgium have saved a little bit for their second leg. That's Kukut. The third leg running really strongly in the final 50 metres. And that was a good change over from Spain and the Czech Republic and Poland. Poland have got Natalia Kaczmarek on this third, fourth and final leg expect Kaczmarek to glide past these other athletes. There she goes. She takes Hernandez of Spain. She takes Vondrova of the Czech Republic. And now she's only got the Belgium team in her sight. Surely Great Britain home and dry. Lavia Nilsson hitting the 200 metre mark some two or three seconds behind the rest of the competitors. Belgium have got to hold strong here. There's going to be some big charges from Natalia Kaczmarek and Vondrova of the Czech Republic. All to fight for in the closing stages. Top three through the, go through automatically. Great Britain and Northern Ireland, some 30 or 40 metres ahead. The Belgian team, as they so often do, saving a little bit for the last 50 metres. Camille Laus of Belgium is going to hold on for second place. Natalia Kaczmarek bringing the Polish quartet through into third place. Lada Vondrova 
only able to settle the fourth. The Belgium women's team do this every single time, save a tiny bit for the last 50 metres. They fight to get a good position at 200. Then they seem to relax and gather. And just when you think they're going to get swallowed up by the other nations, they go again. Brilliant tactics from the Belgian quartet. And the Polish team look like they're having a bit of a debrief. I think that's going to be discussing that third changeover that was super messy. Well, the Brits were so far ahead uh, once Amma Pippi really got into her running that it was a fairly lax, relaxed uh, last couple of legs for Jürgen and Nielsen. But as you say, really impressive from the Belgians, particularly after the men, slightly disappointed, but have made it through to the final. I think also the women have, have gained from being part of the mixed relay quartets and, and developing a team that trains together and works really hard for one another. Poland, well, I thought that uh, just like she did at the World Championships, Margot holub kowalik was uh, a little bit disappointing on her relay leg, drifted back into fourth and almost a fifth. But uh, luckily they did have uh, Sweetie Ercicic, again, not had the best season, the defending champion, didn't make the final. And then Kazimierz, who has run sub-50 seconds this year, just to make sure that they got through in third place. Otherwise, it could have been very close with uh, Poland, who also won the relay team, the, the relay, sorry, last... Uh, time we had these championships in Berlin in 2018 beating the Czech Republic and Spain they'll have to wait to see if their times are good enough yes. good runs all round and I think that Polish team they were moving themselves really well into a good position the second leg athlete Kolob Kowalik ran really well but the, the advantage the ground that she'd made up just almost got neutralized and that scrappy changeover athletes were crossing all across the track trying to find the yeah, athlete they were meant to be handing over to Zoe Clark and Amma Pippi, not sort of in the A string 4x4 quartet, but I think with those two runs there, we could be having a bit uh, getting into that team. They gave the Great Britain Northern Ireland team a huge advantage, and that just allowed Nicole Jurgen and Lavia Nielsen to relax and not have to worry about all the drama that was going on behind. Captain yeah. I was going to say, I think I probably said this, was about to say the same as you, Hannah. It was a, just a, a terrific last leg from Natalia Kazmarak. Uh, she's a sub-50 second performer and she's really almost bailed the Poles out there, out of a very difficult situation. Uh, we were talking earlier about the Poles and uh, speculating on how well they were going to do. It doesn't look like they're really firing on all cylinders here. They've got other people to come in for the last leg. I'm uh, Justina Sweetie Ursatich, not showing the same form as previous seasons. Iga Baumgart Witten, again, she made the final of the 400 metres, but perhaps just a little bit down on the form of previous seasons. Yes, they've got Kilbasinska and also, of course, Kazmarak. Still a little bit unimpressed with them. So, unsell of Turkey, 68.97 so far. Well, we've said it's a somewhat underwhelming javelin qualification in terms of distance because of the conditions. But uh, let's just have a look how that compares. So, 77.01 is at this point in time needed. Tonni Keranen of uh, Finland has that particular mark at this moment. There are three Finns set to go through to that final. And you can see they're on sale. That 11 relates to 11th overall in this group. So disappointment for him. Only one athlete below him, Jakub Samuelsson, who is carrying two failures. So the Latvians, two in the first pool. Gylums and uh, Strovenders. This is at Gattis Kax. 87.57 at best. That was three years ago in Austria. So, can he improve by three metres? No, afraid not. Rollins at Strobinders in a strong position, 77.33 from Group A. So, disappointment for Gattis Kax, also given as an invalid attempt as well. No one has uh, come near that uh, automatic qualification mark of 83.50. Disappointment for Kax because he was also just missed out four years ago in Berlin by one place on the final. And he's not going to be in the final again, but these women are going to be in the women's high jump final. All 13 women 
Going down to Yuli Lebchenko, the 2017 world champs silver medalist. Needed three attempts to get over 187. All 13 women who did get over 187 progressed through to the final. On to our final track race at this morning session in day five. So second heat of the women's four by four. So Great Britain, Belgium and Poland qualify automatically. Who can join them in the final? Netherlands have got a strong squad on paper. Let's see who they've decided to field in this opening heat. Finland, Iris and Bas. Kukkonen and Hallinen. They <laughs> can see themselves on the big screen. Switzerland, Lemons, Niedenberg, Bart and King. Here we go in lane six. Lane five will be Greece. Uliti, Thurda, Morta and Nafaki. Smart and waves all round. Slovenia go in lane four. Led off by Zupin, then on to Simicic, Lugevic, and then Anita Horvat on the final leg. She fell in her 800 metre heat. She had something to prove, the Slovenian national record holder. Lane three, Alicia Smith, leader, runner, so popular in Germany and with this crowd. Mona Meyer will go for, on the second leg. Sully on the third leg. Luna Teal will complete their lineup. France go in lane two. It was the second European uh, team at the World Championships. The cost was Kaye uh, and Rossier. Completing the lineup in lane one are the Irish quartet of Sophie Becker, Phil Healy, Rashida Adelecki, and Charlene Maudsley. They are the Dutch quartet. I missed their names, so just to update you, Boomer will be the lead off leg runner, and then Lika Klava <laughs> vying for the title of the busiest woman at these. European Championships will go on lane two. And then both the Witt sisters, great to see them here. They've struggled with injury, I think, in the last couple of years. Laura de Witt first, and then Lissanne de Witt to complete the lineup. Set. First leg underway. As we've said before, this whole leg will be run in lanes. That looks like a fast start for Switzerland. They've opened up a gap over Greece already. You can see the difference in the stagger there. As expected, the Netherlands on the outside going super fast. The graphic revealing that it is Ireland that have had the fir fastest first 200 metres. Sophie Becker is very good over 200 metres and she has got the endurance to make it last over 400. But Netherlands out in lane eight and Ireland on the inside in lane one, having a good run so far, but Sopna Lacoste of France coming back at the Irish athlete ever so slightly and Switzerland looking like they're moving through. Long, long stagger. Let's see who hands that baton over first. It's going to be super tight. Ireland raise it first, hand it over first, and then it is Switzerland and Netherlands. Phil Healy of Ireland's on the tight inside lane. You can see the dangers outside her and she's Gliding past the rest of the athletes, Lika Klava of the Netherlands is incredibly quick. Whether it's 200 or 400, she's a formidable competitor, so we'd expect Lika Klava to glide past Phil Healy. Let's see who hits that first 200, and it is Lika Klava of the Netherlands. So that will mean that her next athlete she's handing over to, Laura De Witt, will be on the inside <laughs> of the handover lane. So Lika Klava should have an easy run here in lane one. Phil Healy rallying well. Bitterly disappointed with her individual showing. This is much better from Ireland's Phil Healy. She's coming under pressure from Switzerland. But Ireland doing well to hold on to third place at the moment. Lika Klava hands over to Laura De Witt. Swiss team just had, handing over to Anne, Anina Farr first there in second place at the moment. But it is Rashida Adelaki fifth place individual athlete for Ireland with a new Irish record who's already gliding past the Swiss team into second place. Tall Adelaide doing everything she can to eat up the ground on Laura De Witt ahead of her. Laura De Witt holds the lead through 200. That will keep the Netherlands on the tight inside line, the shortest route. All the other teams are going to have to battle behind. Rashida Adelecki doing everything she can to give the Charlene Maudley of Ireland a fighting chance in the closing leg. 
Adelaki with a brilliant leg for Ireland is pulling them into the lead. Striding away from Laura De Vick. Laura De Vick coming under pressure from far of Switzerland. It's going to be Ireland first. Charlene Mortley goes off in the lead. Switzerland in second with Sarah King. And Netherlands, Lissanne De Vick giving chase. Host nation Germany in third at the moment. Can they do anything to get back on terms with these athletes? Luna Thiel in fourth place out of the automatic qualifying spots, chasing hard down the back straight. The Sandabit swinging wide on the home straight, on the back straight, trying to get herself ahead of King to give her a, herself a shot at second place in a short inside line. But it is Charlene Maudsley of Ireland striding away with the win. They've got 30 or 40 metres over the rest of the athletes. It's a brilliant run from the Irish quartet. Netherlands looks strong in the last 60, 70 metres. Lysander Vick looking brilliant as she strides away for second place. Swiss team doing well to hold off a fast finishing German quartet. And Lysander Vick catching sure Charlene Maudsley in the closing stages. I think Charlene Maudsley probably thought she was home and dry. And Lysander Vick carrying so much momentum. That will give them a very handy lane in the final. The uh, Dutch quartet. If you've got a good lane and you've got good runners in the first few legs and you can get yourself out of trouble, that could be significant. The Netherlands versus Poland versus Great Britain could be a fascinating battle. Yeah, and delightful, particularly for Lysander Bett, who was the bronze medalist four years ago. So you said she's struggled a little bit with injuries over the last few years. I believe it's the plan actually for her to come in for the final of the World Championships. But the Netherlands didn't qualify frustratingly for her. And so that was the end of her competition. But Ireland, fantastic really inspiring i'm sure with anna lakey setting that national record in her final really buoyed the quartet on and uh, phil healy as you said kind of the opposite for her trying to get through to that final after disappointing individually she said she didn't come all the way to munich to run her worst race of the season switzerland making it through in third and uh, just having a look at those uh, times coming up looks like the czech republic and spain are faster Wonderful emotive response there from the Czech Republic and Spain. Delighted to make the final German quartet. Good season's best, but not quite enough to make it in. It was a really brave last couple of legs from the German quartet. But the Netherlands, when you think they're missing from Kibolt, Great Britain were missing a couple of their top competitive competitors. Poland, we've got Anna Kielbrasinska to bring in and Bamgart Bitten. Really tough one to call. Lika Klava, two individual events, and now in the heat for the 4x4. Femke Bowles, super busy as well. Ugh. Too close to call between all those teams. Well, I think the Netherlands might just have the edge if Femke Bowles has got anything left in her legs, of course. So she's going to have been running four races already in the individual 400 and then over the barriers. The Dutch have got great backup runners as well, as you talk about, Lika Klaver and the De Witts as well, so that's a great quartet. I think the Poles are going to have to raise their game, as I said. I think they're just a little bit below their very best. If I was a betting person, I'd put a little bit of money on the Dutch. Also, big surprise for me, not seeing Germany or France in the final. That's a big turn up, I think. So there we see. Once again, confirmation of the results. Netherlands, Ireland, Switzerland. And a big shout out for Phil Healy on that second leg for Ireland. That was an absolutely terrific run from Phil Healy. Alex was talking about the fact that she did underperform in her individual 400 metres. But came back with a plomb to really bolster the team. And it was her that was really so crucial in propelling Ireland into the final. Germans, well, left to have a bit of a post-mortem about what went wrong with their team. It's going to be... However, Germany has had so much success. Come on, Germany, <laughs> give, the, give the rest of the continent a bit of a chance. <laughs> You're right, Phil, they've had a, a smashing day. Crucially, though, I spotted that uh, when Laura de Witt finished her leg, she did impede the German runner who had to go um, into lane two or possibly lane three around her. So uh, maybe we'll see another replay of that, but just watch out for that. Ooh, well done, Alex. I didn't spot that. That could be very, very important. There we can see. Oh, heartbreak. I thought that Czech team looked a little bit 
less happy than they were when the times popped up on the screen. They can, I don't know if that replay's gone out on the big screen, but I think it will be disqualified with that lane infringement, and that will see the Germans into the final. That's why they're smiling, and they've lost the smiles of the Czech team. Time for a few conspiracy theories, perhaps. <laughs> no, no, I'm sure comment. not. No, we saw it on the replay. I think that was quite a legitimate disqualification. Mardare, the Moldovan here, trying to make it through to the final. So 75-13 so far, and that is much better. So last round effort. We haven't missed any major throws. It's still those two athletes over 80 metres. Jakob Vavlec and uh, Julian Weber. And 77-20 needed to make it through to that final. Last few throws here. Mardare. And that looks good. So 78 metres and 78 centimetres. That's fourth in this group. And that looks good with that six overall across the two pools. And indeed, Vlad Vlech has passed his final round. He knows he's qualified. Summary of the qualification into the final Great Britain and Northern Ireland bronze medal winning team at world champs unsurprisingly topping the table there and that disqualification for the Czech Republic for a lane infringement sees the host nation Germany into the final shout out for I know Polkinen of Finland because she was actually in both relays there or I wonder what point Finland's uh, baton mishap happened and whether she ended up at significantly less tired than she would have been Samuelson of Sweden then he's trying to make it through to this javelin final let's see well two fouls so far 77 meters needed and that is not going to be enough tough situation there well had to go for it to try and get a place in the final and 70 meters 39 only for the Swedes so difficult situation for all of these athletes actually very closely matched if we look, 77.20 is the 12th spot, and 7th is 77.68, so just 48 centimetres separating six competitors. But a number of athletes opting to pass, knowing that even though they are some few metres off the automatic qualification mark, they still have done enough. The High Society of France. So, two meters, 80 centimeters, he needs to improve by. Again, struggling a little off to the right hand side. Jakub Vavlec, part of this second group, but only needed that one effort of 81 81. Standing him in good stead in the final so we've had our relay heats 4x1s and 4x4 there is another matter to tidy up in a moment which will be Turkey rerunning their leg and their run after they were impeded in their initial heat but first of all let's catch up with the javelin overall standings so three goes each for this men and Jakub Vadlec, best overall. And these are some of the competitors who didn't make it. And they include the defending champion, Thomas Vetter. Low expectations for him. Only 72 metres this year. But a shame to see his decline following surgery and uh, not getting back to his best form is a shame to see. So 24 competitors, of course, 12 advancing to that javelin final. Watched on, of course, by the world record holder, Jan Zelezny, who's here looking after the Czechs. And he should be pretty pleased with how they've done in these difficult conditions. Vadlec and Vesely and Konechny all making it through to that men's final. So this leaves us now with this matter to set up regarding Turkey. 
So we did think, we, well, according to the original schedule, we should have finished with the men's four, the women's 4x400 four heat. But we are going to see the Turkish 4x1 men's team have a rerun. They appealed the in initial result. They said they were impeded by the Finnish team. And that means they get to rerun and they're going to try and get one of the non-automatic qualifying times. Belgium, the fastest of the non-automatic qualifiers with 38.72. And it's the Italian squad, 39.02. So if Turkey do indeed get into the final, they're going to need to run faster than the Italian squad, at least. With that 39.02, it would be a shock to see the Olympic champions knocked out in such fashion. But the officials agreeing with the Turkish athletes that they have got the right to rerun. Squad of Barnes, Harvey, Lucia and Ozcan will run at 12.30 local time. Most of the fans making their way out. There's been a persistent drizzle as we had last night here this morning in Munich. So here is a look at the Turkish team coming into their final handover here and they feel that they, they can see quite no, unwittingly, it wasn't on purpose. The Finnish team there uh, just swinging wide. So apologies, that's the first handover. See the Turkish athlete really unhappy, turning back around saying, are you aware you just hit me midair? And it does totally take Barnes off his stride there. And that will have slowed them down. They did manage somehow. <laughs> oh, it was a legal handover. And then the second leg runner, I think that might be Jack Ali Harvey, drifted out of his lane as well. See the first leg runner just his momentum knocked, his speed kind of killed there. And the Turkish athletes, bronze medal in Berlin a few years ago, was silver. They, they do deserve to be in the final. So they're saying that, please just give us another go. And they are going to get that in around about 20 minutes time. Yeah, it was a silver in fact. So the same quartet will go again, as you said, in uh, 23 minutes time. So I think uh, just until shortly before then, we may indeed take a, a bit of a break from Coventry until we are ready to get going again.
You're listening to coverage of the European Athletics Championships. We created this audio stream to make sure that no matter where you are, you can keep up with all the action from Munich. If you'd prefer to watch our live coverage or to check out the highlights, head to athletics.eurovisionsports.tv. We'll either give you access to our live stream or we'll link you to your local broadcaster. Wherever you live, athletics.eurovisionsports.tv will guarantee you some way of watching the coverage live. All the best moments, all the medals. Don't miss a second of Munich 2022 on all athletics. We'll be back live soon, but in the meantime, here's some highlights from these championships so far. Men's 1500 meters. Could be a swift closing lap here. I don't think it's been lightning fast in the middle stages, but Jakob Ingebrigtsen will turn the screw here, 251 through 1200. He's maintained a really healthy pace here. Mario Garcia just sticking to him like glue. And here comes Michael Rosmus of Poland. Jake Hayward of Great Britain and Northern Ireland trying to make sure he doesn't get stuck behind a easy of Rosmus of either of them falter. Going to be Mario Garcia of Spain that's going to come under pressure for the minor medals because Jakob Ingebrigtsen looks full of running. Such a deceptive last 300 metres. He saved himself an awful lot. He won it in 2018. His brother Philip took it in 2016. Nikisi Benavad upset the string of wins in 2014. The Inga Brits and brothers, that brings their medal tally in the last decade in the European 1500 metres to six, better than any other nation, just in one family. Of course, I felt strong today and uh, I felt good doing the warm up. And uh, I knew that there was a chance uh, to run fast, so I uh, feel pretty good. Yes, but uh, I felt that the Spanish guy was pushing me and uh, tripping me in my heel, so I needed to save something for the last lap, but, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied, yeah. One sentence for uh, Norwegian audience. A lot of here today. Yes, uh, I saw a lot of Norwegian flags, so of course it's, uh, it's amazing that so many people, maybe not necessarily that they are Norwegians, but cheering for me, so... Uh, Feels amazing, and of course I wanted to to, to bring a show uh, for them, so uh, feels good. Congrats, thank you very thank much. Jakob Ingebrigtsen didn't put a foot wrong. 3:32 championship record. Well, there's not a lot more you can say about Ingebrigtsen over the last four years. Even in the COVID year of 2020, he's been almost peerless. He's had the occasional faltering, but he's just kept on taking all the titles on the European stage. Absolutely magnificent. The double double now for Inga Britson. But credit indeed to Jake Hayward. His tactics perfect. Didn't get caught up with Inga Britson. Couldn't probably match Inga Britson, but came through for a great silver medal. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's nice to definitely get on the podium. I would have liked to probably been up there and you know challenging Jacob, but considering how I felt the last few days, like I'll take that. You know, almost got knocked out on Monday. So yeah, it's a good turnaround for me, and yeah, for my first senior medal, so that's brilliant. And Garcia, well, he was fourth in Eugene, now third, and he'll be on the podium for Spain. Men's hammer throw. Vitsky, second place at the moment. 80 meters, 91. He's one centimeter behind Bent's Haas. If he matches that, if he was 80, 92, that'll be enough to go into the league because he threw 80, 90 as well. Oh, Nowitzki, good balance there, good core stability, strength. Wow, that's a whopper. Bullshit Nowitzki in the fifth round. He is the defending champion. He is the Olympic champion. Couldn't take that world title in Eugene. He will give us a smile. He will give us some emotion, but he's a, a businessman until the end. Bullshit Nowitzki. 
I feel good today. Uh, for me, the circle was very good, uh, fast, and uh, I feel the, the hammer. My feeling it was was great for me, and uh, it's you see the score, yeah, 82, and uh, many throws above 80 meters. So so for me it's great. I I'm really surprised for this uh, competition because uh, I prepare especially for World Championship. It, it, it was the main main goal for me in this season. So this is additional start, and I'm happy. Volchek Nowitzki successfully defending his gold medal. Ben Salas upgrading from a bronze in Berlin four years ago to a silver here in Munich. Nowitzki had was pushed all the way to a world leading mark of 82 meters to beat the Hungarian Ben Salas. Hungarian team staying in our hotel. I think it'd be quite noisy in the lobby. I you know at the first three throws, I just wanted to make sure to get into the final eight and. Uh, on my first row, uh, I was uh, before my first row, I was a little bit nervous, very nervous, and uh, that made me a little bit calm after. What are you thinking now? What's next? What's next for me? Well, maybe <laughs> we celebrate this one tonight, and uh, the season is not over for me. I have a uh, few more competitions back in Hungary, so. I feel like I can still improve yeah. on this mark, so yes, I will go for it and then, uh, you know, next year World Championship at Budapest. So we did think, we, well, according to the original schedule, we should have finished with the men's four, the women's 4x400 heat, but we are going to see the Turkish 4x1 men's team have a rerun. They appealed the initial result, they said they were impeded by the Finnish team, and that means they get to rerun and they're going to try and get one of the non-automatic qualifying times. Belgium, the fastest of the non-automatic qualifiers with 38.72. Then it's the Italian squad with 39.02. So if Turkey do indeed get into the final, they're going to need to run faster than the Italian squad, at least. With that 39.02, it would be a shock to see the Olympic champions knocked out in such fashion but the officials agreeing with the Turkish athletes that they have got the right to rerun. Squad of Barnes, Harvey, Uzi and Ozkan will run at 12.30 local time. So I think uh, just until shortly before then, we may indeed take a, a bit of a break from Coventry until we are ready to get going again. We'll be back live soon, but in the meantime, here's some highlights from these championships so far. Women's 5,000 meters. And for the first time, I can see stress and strain across the face of Yasmin Chan. And it's going to be Constanza Klosterhalfen, Coco to everyone in the crowd. There's a massive group of supporters in the main stand. Klosterhalfen, she's looking up at the big screen in front of her as she comes up with 200 meters to go. She's passing the back markers. She's loving people over 12 and a half laps of the track. Chan, I think now, she's just too far away to be able to settle for anything other than the silver medal. And Klosterhalven's picking it up, even pulling away. She's really delivering a statement after suffering from COVID after Eugene. A disappointing running Eugene. And she's absolutely flying down the home straight. It's as noisy as it was a couple of nights ago when Nicholas Cowell took the gold medal. Constance Klosterhalven takes gold. 14.50.47 unofficially, yet another German gold medal. It's a night to remember for Kostens Klosterhaufen taking the title at the European Athletics Championships here in Munich. She has a flag, of course, can't be hard to find one of those around here. On a lap of honour, athletes still finishing well behind. But Klosterhaufen seemed to have great confidence just to wait and be patient until that crucial 3rd K, 4th K. Then came the increase in pace. Such a hard challenge, of course, for Chan to try and win the double. She at least has one title. And Klosterhaufen is the 5,000 metre champion. And what a classy race indeed. The early pace didn't suggest they were going to get anywhere near the championship record of Sifan Hassan from four years ago. But in the end, they were just barely four seconds outside it. As our 
I'm delighted for Constanza Klosterhalk and she's been a brilliant athlete through the age groups. She's a phenomenal 1500 meter runner. I remember her front running a 359 at the German Championships all on her own. She's been 159, 339, low, no, mid 830s for 3K. She's just such a phenomenal athlete and she's plugged away through adversity. She tried to have a bit of a comeback at the European Cross Country in Dublin and it just didn't go her way. And you thought, would we ever see Constanza Costa Halfen back to winning ways? And she is here today in front of this home crowd in Munich. If there's anyone out there dealing with injuries, illness, disruption, if they're a young athlete or an established athlete, they should look to someone like Constanza, Constanza Costa Halfen for inspiration because that was phenomenal. So you join us for the unexpected conclusion, should we say, of this morning's session, the European Athletics Championships. You can see here, Finland judged to have impeded Turkey, the outgoing Finnish runner. Second leg, accidentally knocking the arm of uh, the Turkish leadoff man as he was approaching that changeover. So Turkey, they'll go in the same lane again and with the same quartet as well. As we see an angle or so you so you've got Finland in lane two and Turkey in, in three. And so uh, it was in the build up to the change over there where they were judged to be impeding. So video evidence was looked at and protest was made. And Turkey have this chance to make it in. So what do they need to do? Well, we already know that seven teams have qualified, but there's this target time of 39.02. That was the time that was run by the Italians in the second heat, and they finished in fifth place. So the Turkish quartet just putting down their changeover marks. They don't want to get disqualified, especially as they're running on their own. You can imagine the judges looking at them very closely. Yeah, I have seen that before, though, and it's particularly embarrassing. But yeah, so we've got two of the uh, quartet that ran when they won the silver medal in Berlin four years ago. So here we are, Turkey, in this race that uh, we didn't expect to have, but the second of these championships where we've seen a, a solo rerun with Artur Abele reinstated in the decathlon after initially a false start given in the sprint hurdles. That had rather more of a spectator interest, didn't it, considering the fact that he was a home hero? Yes, I, I still have difficulty. I've looked at it a couple of times to, to see how he managed to get reinstated, but uh, I'll leave that to the judges. I, I thought it was a fairly clear disqualification, but then the judges said there was no evident, no clear evidence that he had uh, had broken contact with the pad. So anyway, this was a lot clearer, a lot more indisputable, and the Turks do get a second second opportunity to try and make the 4x100 metres final. Yes, yeah, so it will be Emre Zafir Barnes, Jacques Ali Harvey. So they were the two that were part of that quartet. No Ramil Guliev, who of course was the uh, 200 champion four years ago and world champion in 2017 in London. Kaihan Urza and Emre Urzkan looking for 39.02 or better. So we saw a couple of minutes ago actually there was a, a downpour of rain which didn't help. It's just starting to dry out at the moment. I mean, still, this is a difficult task, isn't it, Phil? It is. It's very difficult. I mean, the conditions, of course. But I have to say, if anything, it's actually drying out very, very quickly. And in the last few minutes, it's almost noticeably increased in temperature by a couple of degrees. So even though they've got the very difficult task of running on their own, the conditions have certainly improved quite considerably from when the heat was originally run this morning, when it was very damp and quite chilly, and we were all sitting here, if not quite shivering, but they were contemplating putting on a sweater. Still a scattering of spectators here who want to catch every minute of this Munich 2022 European Athletics Championships. And of course, recently announced 
We will be off to Rome in two years' time when it will be the earliest ever European Athletics Championships ever held. It will be in the middle of June. It's uh, one of the key stepping stones for European athletes to go on to the Olympics in Paris a little bit later on that summer. Anxious watch on for the Turkish contingent inside this stadium as we wait for this race to get underway. Scheduled to do so in five minutes' time, I make it, but maybe they're going to go off early. So not. We have got all the athletes out there waiting. And of course, we will be off to Turkey next March for the European Athletics Indoor Championships. I'm looking forward to going back to Istanbul. I was there in 2012 when we had the World Indoor Championships there, and it's a superb arena, the Akoy Arena. Difficult, in a way, to recapture the same sort of competitive environment when you've just got one team on their own, isn't it? For those, the, for the athletes involved to really focus in the zone, you don't have those around you, it can sometimes be a little bit more tricky. It's I've more seen, like a training run. Yeah, I've seen a few reruns over the years, and I'm struggling to remember a team that's actually got through one of them. You know, you're absolutely right there, Alex, in terms of the motivation has gone, the competitive element has dissolved. Yes, I mean, it's absolutely right that they were awarded a rerun, but the circumstances are very different. Nevertheless, that is quite a talented quartet out there, that's without a doubt. Turkey in recent years have managed to produce some good sprinters, Jack Ali Harvey, Emma Barnes, although perhaps a, a little bit towards the end of their careers nowadays. Ramil Guliev, 2017 world champion over 200 meters, not quite firing on the same cylinders with the same velocity as he was. I seem to remember the United States having a, a rerun at the 2006 Rio Olympics and making it through. These Turkish athletes, they've been out for a, a few moments and, well, the longer they are out there, the more we might see the sun drying out the track a little bit. It's drying out very rapidly indeed, you're absolutely right. I mean, it was sodden through most of this morning and, of course, last night when we had a rain-delayed start to the evening session. But it's almost perceptible steam rising off the track as, it, as the water evaporates. Of course, this has been repaired and resurfaced to make drainage a lot better. The stadium, as we've often mentioned, one of the real historic stadiums around the world. The 1972 Olympics was staged, that was the centrepiece of those Olympics, and then the 2002 European Athletics Championships. Yes, yeah, so uh, thanks, by the way, to statistician Mark Butler who, for confirming it was the US women who got into the Rio 2016 Olympic 4x4, 4x100 meters. After rerun, they've been impeded by Brazil in the heats. Tiana Bartoletta, Alison Felix, English Gardner, and Monolaker. Akinos, and on that occasion, though, they had such quality within the team that really going against a, a target time of the uh, eighth overall team wasn't maybe as challenging. Of course, these are the silver medalists. So here we go, aiming for 39-02 Etta, the Turkish men's four by one quartet. Well, I'm sure they'll be grateful for this opportunity after the protest was successful. Zafé Barnes then on this lead of leg, handing over to Jack Ali Harvey. Of course, he was DQ'd in the 100 meters individually. So without this, at least a chance would have been a really disappointing competition for him. Over to uh, Kaihan Urza. 23 seconds on the clock now. One more change to go to Ertan Erskan. Fighting now, trying to get to the line before 39.02. And it looks close, my word. Looks like they've done it. Wow. What summoning of strength by the Turkish team. And they know that should put them into the final. And they managed it despite a less than perfect changeover on that last leg. I think the 
thanks have to go to Barnes and Harvey on the first two legs. So they actually ran really storming first two legs. Oza and Ozcan struggled to connect, but they got the baton through. And in the end, yes, it looks like they crept into the final by four hundredths of a second, beating the target time set by the Italians. So that eliminates Italy, the Olympic champions, and no opportunity for the 100 metre champion, Lamont Marcel Jacobs, to have another appearance at these championships. Yeah, I'm sure that will uh, frustrate the Italians. As you said there, they were without Lamont Marcel Jacobs. It was only Lorenzo Pata who was in that uh, Olympic quartet. Filippo Tortu, he's still focusing on the 200 metre individual competition with the final being tonight. Well, there's a handful of Turkish fans stayed here all the way through the morning. And there we go. And they're saluting the support who've stood with them through thick and thin. Um, quite a little story, that, having been impeded and then coming back and qualifying. Yeah, not everyone gets that second chance. Well, I think that's going to be the conclusion of this session, unless we've got any more surprise races up the sleeve. And that's Oza, the third leg runner, cheering his compatriot, Ozcan. I remember at the European Under-20 Championships three years ago, Turkey didn't make it through, they protested, and then they were advanced, and eventually they took gold in a very competitive final. I just wonder how good this Turkish quartet can be. I think it's going to be tough for them. And you see, that wasn't the best of changeovers either from Harvey. No, it was from Oza to Ozcan. He had to look over his shoulder. He wasn't quite sure where the baton was. Nevertheless, there was just the tiniest of margins, just four hundredths, and they managed to make it into the final. Can hanging on to the baton ran a great last leg just to keep his focus, keep pounding down the home straight and all the way through the line. Well, deserved celebrations from the Turks. It's going to be a bit of a tall order to make it a fairy tale ending. I don't quite see them in amongst the medals, but who knows? Four by 100 meter relays over the years have provided plenty of stories. Whether it's the Italians winning the Olympic title, Great Britain winning the Olympic title in Athens, defeating the hugely favored American quartet, and some of the great races at the European Athletics Championships. And finally, there we do have the teams that will go through to the final including as the fastest non-automatic qualifiers Belgium and you've just seen them Turkey but at the sharp end well I expect the medals to be contested between Germany France and Great Britain Northern Ireland but it's always a question of getting the baton around slickly all three of those teams have great individual runners and we expect to see Great Britain and Northern Ireland bring in Zarnell Hughes, the individual silver medalist. But Turkey get their chance to run again. So that brings an end to this morning session one of the shorter morning sessions and indeed the very last morning session that will be in the olympic stadium tomorrow the morning session will be out in the city center with the 20 kilometer race walks no medals this morning but we've had 27 gold medals already in the previous four days of competition germany topping it with five gold medals and no less than 16 countries have struck gold already here in the Bavarian capital, including the likes of Finland, Romania, 
And then an additional 11 countries have got themselves a medal of a different hue, silver and bronze. There's the medal table from the overall nine sport multi multi-sport European Championships. Germany topping it with Germany, but France have actually got more medals. As we scroll through all those countries that have won medals in everything from table tennis to sport climbing, cycling, gymnastics, triathlon. A great panorama of sports here at these multi-sport European Championships. The second edition after the first edition held four years ago in Glasgow and Belgium. In Belgium? In Berlin. And this is what we've got look, to look forward to tonight. Eight gold medals to be decided, including both men's and women's 200 metres, Men's and women's 400 metres hurdles, including Karsten Warholm, Fenke Boll. Plenty of action in the field. Women's 1500 metres. And as we come to an end this morning, it's time for myself, Phil Minchel, and my co-commentators Alex Seftel and Hannah England to say, join us again in about six hours' time. Eight hours' time.